For this Washington team, the stakes couldn't be higher. They keep winning. They're going to be where they want to be. With a Heisman hopeful at the helm. Michael Penick has the nation's attention. But it is jarring, the numbers he's putting up. When everything is on the line, who else makes that throw? Keep pressing on these boys next. They're going to continue to fill us all season. Just to the south, there's a squad that's all about winning at home. Let's go, man. Where they've been known to dethrone. The Beavers shocked the college football world. Every game is going to be a fist fight. It's going to go down to the end. Washington is executing as the best team in college football. The Beavers have turf to protect and dreams to cut down. Someone's gonna get it my way. Washington, Oregon State on Saturday Night Football. Seventeen game win streak for Washington. Haven't lost in more than a year, but Oregon State has won sixteen of seventeen here at Reeser Stadium. It was nice this morning, Kurt, before you got here, but it is sloppy. Rain throughout the evening here. Kellen DeBoard's team says they're prepared for it. He's with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, the weather is not friendly right now. How does this impact play calling and your ability to function in this? Yeah, I mean, I think they'll do a good job of keeping the balls dry uh, as best they can. And, uh, you know, we're used to practicing this up north, so um, it is what it is. You know, both teams have the same weather, so here we go. Their rushing attack with the leading rusher in the Pac-12 is potent. How do you stop that tonight? Your defense has had to shore up a little bit. Yeah, he's a great, great player. They all are. And, um, you know, we just got to do our job. Everyone's got to understand the gap, uh, be, be disciplined, uh, because the play action will come behind it. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. Kalen got his 100th win as a coach last week. He is 21-2 and two at Washington. Huskies have dominated, winning 10 of the last 11. But each of the last three have been by six points or fewer. And each of the last two meetings, back-to-back -back years, decided by a late field goal. Beavers won here a couple years ago. Washington and Penix, a long marathon drive set up the game winner last year. First time in 108 meetings, both or in the top 10, at least in the AP ratings. Beavers won the toss. They deferred. You'll see Penix in this high-powered offense in the rain and in the noise of Reeser. Atticus Sappington to boot it away. Wind, not a factor. Rain, maybe a factor. Daniel Ngata. We'll come up and take this kick at the five. And Gata has some space and a nice looking return out across the 35 yard line. So Michael Penix averaging over 350 yards per game. Talked about the hand size. He takes care of the football. And he's got Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, and Jalen McMillan back tonight in the slot. That's big. Yeah, I, I think when you have a quarterback that can handle the ball in these conditions, I, I think the advantage goes to the offense in the passing game. The receivers know how to control their body weight when they make cuts. It's the defender that has to react and can lose their footing on a, on a track like this. Talked about Dylan Johnson, the tailback. He's effective at pounding it between the tackles. Quick penetration. Look at the cut that he makes and works hard to pick up about four on first down. Here are the impact players when UW has the ball. Well, you got to start with Dylan Johnson, what he can do. But Roma Adunze, of course, we know about the passing game. Jalen McMillan, we've talked all week about the importance of him in the slot. This defense is fantastic. They can fly around. Watch out for Arnold, number five. And then Chatfield off the edge, number 10, the building rush to quarterback. Here's a pitch on second down. Johnson knocked out of bounds a couple yards short of the market by Keaton Oladapo. They're thin back there at safety. Oladapo's got to step up and play big tonight along with Akili Arnold. Yeah, they got to set the edge. The linebackers are going to have to fly downhill. But again, I, you're going to see an offense that knows how to attack. They know their identity. Smart to try to get it out on the edge, but it sets up our first first down, our first third down of the game. Beavers tough. Opponents just 36% on third so far. He's showing blitz right here. And they just show it and drop it. It's like he is. 
Four-man rush. Penix from the pocket. Slings it across the middle, and the catch is made by Jack Westover. And the tight end is a first down in Beaver territory. He does a nice job. He's known for his routes. Watch him sell this to the outside and then back to the inside. There's the rhythm and the timing. It's not just about the big plays in this offense downfield. It's about the efficiency that Michael Penix throws with and not, again, just the outside receivers. You're going to see the slot with McMillan and a tight end there in Westover. Doesn't work the middle of the field that often. Really attacks the edges, but able to convert there on third. Well protected. And that is complete to Roma Dunze, one of the top receivers in the country. He beat Jaden Robinson, and they're in the red zone. When you talk about a tough ask, when he works across on these deep over routes, watch the corner try to run with him. First of all, he gets off the line of scrimmage, so he's got great separation. And you've got accuracy like this with Michael Penix. We talked about the rain, the conditions. How's that? Nice throw, and you talk about getting into a rhythm early for the Washington offense. It's 25-yard catch. They're just outside the red zone with the first down at the 23. Odunze in motion, takes the pop pass, slips a tackle. He had him trapped behind the line, but he escapes for about five yards. Andrew Chatfield got him down. McCartan read it. He, right, he's right here. He sees the motion. His eyes are on that, so it makes him want to get... See, he feels that as a threat. So he's going to get upfield, not allow that blocker to be able to take him on. Dunes is a very solid 215 pounds physical after the catch. Johnson on second and five. Runs through one tackle. Is dragged down at the 16 by... Easton Mascarenas Arnold. Mascarenas Arnold is, is one of the more physical linebackers you'll see in this conference. You know, they, they lost a great one in Omar Spates, who went to LSU. This crowd, they're trying to make it different. Through the chainsaw? The chainsaw, crank it up. That's, whatever, all hands on deck. That's through the speakers, by the way. Those are not actual chainsaw. Right. You can't bring right. a real no, one no, in here. No, we'll draw the line somewhere, but it does impact this crowd, the student section. They encourage you to bring the little plastic ones in, however. They really do. Johnson fights, twists, and looks like he'll just have first down yardage before Isaac, Isaac Hodgins got him down. Bulo, the right guard against a slanting defensive end. A slant here. Watch this block open this up by the right guard. Bulo right there. Got the tight end coming around to be able to help out. Cuevas. But that is another third down. You want to try to take a crowd out of a game? In, in a rivalry game where they're trying to ruin your season, you're undefeated, you take the ball after the other side defers, and you go down and you convert on third downs. Now it's about just trying to punch it in and get a touchdown instead of selling it for a field goal. Johnson again, deep handoff, spun down after a short gain. Calvin Hart and Joe Golden combined. Calvin Hart from Illinois, a transfer who came in after Omar Spates left to go to LSU. They had to go out to the portal to try to find a linebacker. Seems to be really emerging these last few weeks. Made a nice play there. McMillan is in the game, stacked to the right. Plenty of time for Penix to survey. Off the play fake. There's a low throw that was off the hands of McMillan who hasn't caught a ball in seven weeks. He had a great start to the season, and then injured a knee, and they keep re-aggravating it a couple of times. When they when they move him off the line of scrimmage, when Penix and McMillan are working, it's about just an, it's an option route, and they see the same thing. Here, there's a little hesitation at the top of the route, and Penix didn't quite know which way he was going to go. He had the option to work off leverage inside or out. He threw it out. McMillan looked like he turned in. So another third down. This time they need nine. Blake Block winding down. Got to hurry. This gets it off from the pocket. Zips it to the end zone. Caught touchdown. Rome Odunze. 12-yard strike. Another big play on third down. And the visitors from Seattle draw first blood. Well, Chris, that's called finding a matchup right here he beat him earlier you go right back to him you sell the slant 
Sell it to the inside, the defender responds, and now it's stealing with the accuracy. Great route by Odunze. Good job of recognizing you got a corner that's vulnerable against Odunze, and you hit him for that touchdown. He's the AT&T clicker there. We'll be looking at these matchups all night. We talked about how depleted the Beavers are in the secondary. A lot of star power to match up against. Absolutely, and, and a great job by Penix, the experience. That's another third down. Their third third down on the slant go for the touchdown. Huskies on top. Beavers first possession coming up. Roma Dunze, three catches on the Huskies opening drive, including the touchdown. Now DJ going under the lay, and this Beavers balanced offense will try to answer. Don't really want to get in a high scoring shootout with UW. That's not what Jonathan Smith no. has in mind. No, not at all. It is a potent offense, but that's the Huskies' game. Brady Gross boots it through the end zone. Of course, Uyangalalei arrived at Clemson with all the hype, trying to continue the Tigers' QB tradition. He started 28 games there. He had some brilliant moments, but things got sideways in the last year. Bench in the ACC championship game, jumps in the portal, and then quickly commits to Oregon State because he wanted to be back on the West Coast. He's from California, and he wanted to get ready for the NFL with a pro-style offense. And that's right. I mean, that, that's the thing I think you've seen with him. In fact, what's crazy, you look at he's under center now. He wasn't under center at Clemson. He's under center 52% of the time. Other than the service academies, that's the most of anybody in the country. So it's a very different look for him, and he's in great command. They also lean in a running game. Damian Martinez, already 1,000 yards on the season, had four touchdowns last week. He's a physical runner. Deshaun Fenwick will spell him, and they expect to get downhill on this Husky defense. Damian Martinez, it, it, that's where it starts, number six. Silas Bolton leads a good group of receivers. They got three that can really hurt you with quickness. Dominique Hampton, the safety, leads the Huskies in tackles, and Braylon Trice and ZTF coming off the edge. You'll see number eight on one side and number four on the other. They've got to get after DJ, especially in those third downs. He's been pretty well protected by this O-line so far this season. Short drop. Quick pass, but it was deflected at the line. It never got out there. The clue in the center was in the vicinity, may have gotten fingertips on it. Yeah. They, they, they get tired of hearing just about how good the offense is. They want to let people know about how good they can be as well. It was definitely deflected by Big Thule there, getting his hand on it. They think they maybe get 30, 30 snaps out of him. They're kind of on a pitch count tonight like he was last week. So a quick third down for Oregon State. They need six here. They got the Huskies to jump, so DJ's got a free play. Over the middle, incomplete. It was inaccurate. Jack Belling, who's an excellent tight end, was wide open. And with that free play, they don't take advantage of it. It'll set up a third and one, though. No, but he... Offside. Defense. Number eight. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Just talking about Braylon Trice on third down. He's got to get after him. I think he got a little bit too excited to try to apply that pressure up at the top. Just a little jump. Good job by DJ of, of knowing that he had that free play, waiting and waiting and waiting. This is one of the better offensive lines in college football. They're known for their run blocking, but they've got a great group that's played a lot of football together, so a lot of continuity up front. Deshaun Fenwick, 225-pound hammer. South Carolina transfers in the game, but I'm going to lay on the keeper. will move the six for a first down. He's cut the tackle, too. He goes 250, so they got a lot of beef in the backfield. Yeah, yeah, and, and it gives you plus one when you run the big man. That goes back to his Clemson days. When you're 250 pounds, we saw him run the football a lot, and if you're looking at your TV and you're saying, well, it seems like it's raining a little bit more, yeah, you're, you'd be right. It is pouring right now. It wasn't raining this hard when Washington had the football, but it is coming down now. It's supposed to rain all night. Holly's probably excited about that. She always comes prepared. I know. Toss sweep to Martinez, slips a tackle, another tackle, and hammers into Washington territory. That's what the game plan is tonight. Let's check with Holly, not for the weather, but for the injury situation. Well, guys, there's a major injury on the Washington Huskies defense that is a late scratch. Their linebacker, Alfonso 
though Tukutalo is not going to play tonight, that is a huge loss. Coaches call him the crux of their defense, the best communicator. He was injured midweek. They thought he'd be able to go, but he is a late scratch. So number 42, Carson Bruner, is starting in his place. Not good against one of the Pac-12's best rushing attacks to have your MLB out. Bruner's experience, but Tukutala is a key part of that defense. He was famous for, for dropping the football at the two-yard line after making the big pick last week. Long throw is the arm strength is on display there, but Jabbar Muhammad's a great quarter, recovered well to break it up, tended for Gould. Yeah, like you said, that is a long throw to make. He had the tight end in the flat if he wanted to throw it to Velling, but he decides to go downfield and make the big throw to Gould. And because it was so, he got separation, he comes back to the ball, but because it hung in the air, it gave Muhammad enough time to be able to get his own left hand in there and dislodge that football. Oklahoma State transfer having a terrific season at corner for the Huskies. Quick throw on the edge. Isaiah Irish and Josiah get knocked out, but it's a first down inside the 35, 13 yard gain. Yeah, it's a run play off to the left, and he's just got a, a tag to it where if he sees that he's got a matchup outside two on one with the receivers against the defensive backs with a soft corner throw it just abort the run play and get out there and just steal those yards if you can and again he's, he shows his experience and the fact he's seeing the field right now the disguise from Washington and the different looks that they're giving him not impacting him at all big physical backs very small quick receivers end around Anthony Gold is a returner he's electric 5'8", 172, but he could pick him up and put him down. Nice block from the tight end, Velling, another first down. Yeah, Velling got out there. They, they, they keep rotating these tight ends in. Jermaine Terry, 84, also out in front. And they stretch you like a lot of college offenses these days. Stretch you horizontally with runs like this with a jet sweep. They challenge your manhood between the tackles, and you got to worry about play action. It really affects the eyes of this defense, especially the linebackers and the safeties. We're not going to let it flips it in the flat. Wide open is Silas Bolden, another one of those small speedsters diving near the pylon, but they'll spot him out. Looks like the head linesman standing at the eight-yard line. Well, there I talked about it affects the eyes of the linebackers and, and the safeties. Play action like that, you got this guy's worried about getting in and worrying about underneath, and there's just nobody out in the flat. The discipline, the eye discipline is tested in such a big way because they marry their, their run game with the play action game. So when you're over there on the other side and you see him hand it off, you start to get downhill to stop the run, and then you're out of position. First and goal. Martinez makes a cut and is knocked down at the three. Very, very hard to stop in this position with that offensive line, physical backs, and a big quarterback. Yeah, Thule slipped a block. He, he was in the backfield. He had a chance, but he only got his arm on Martinez. You're not going to stop Martinez with his balance and, and, uh, and physicality he runs with behind that big line. Beavers bring in. Isaac Hodges, number 99, a defensive lineman. It goes 275 to line up at fullback. He blocks for Martinez, who eases into the end zone. And the Beavers, with an assist, the Huskies in that third down penalty, answer with a 75 yard drive. Well, much like Washington. Being aggressive, watch the double team on the right side and really lock in on that, the tackle. He's as good as there is. Fuaga, watch him have chip on the double team, climb to the backer, and Martinez knows to get right behind that. Boy, he has such good vision and feel on those plays. Martinez following up. Monster four touchdown performance last week with an early touchdown. Each offense moving down the field, seven apiece. Pretty good answer, right? Yeah. This is awesome. Kevin all here we go. ABC Saturday Night Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Duluth Trading. Holiday the unaverage way.
Our Saturday Night Football crew is mourning the sudden death of our field audio engineer, Chase Hayes. He's been with us full-time the last four years. Chase passed away last week and the night before our game in Athens. If you've enjoyed the sounds of college football games, you've appreciated the work that Chase has done without knowing it. Our thoughts are with his wife, Amy, his son, Hendricks, and the rest of his family. So 10 play touchdown drives for each offense to begin this game. Oregon State scoring on their opening drive for the ninth time in their 11 games. Ngata lets this one go. To Kevin Nagani in the studio for an update. Kevin. Time now for our Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update in Tallahassee after a devastating leg injury to Jordan Travis. Florida State's defense, Jerry and Jones, forcing the fumble, and then that would set up Trey Benson going in for the score right here to make it 13-10 against North Alabama. Yeah, sometimes, Kev, when the offense is struggling, you have circumstances that you can't control. The defense has to pick it up. The defense is setting the tone tonight for Florida State. And it's Keziah Holmes going in, so Florida State taking their first lead, 17-13. Back to you guys. Yeah, it's just a devastating injury. Yeah. I bet it's so tough to watch. Just a, a great young guy and a great football player. Penix sets up. Long throw near sideline off the hands of Jalen Polk. Arriving just in time was Jaden Robinson to help knock it loose. Yeah, Jaden Robinson in better position on this throw, but he was open. Penix had a chance. Ball just out a little bit late. You can see, I think, after that first series, Robinson given a little bit more of a cushion, getting his eyes on the quarterback and trying to react downhill. He gets there right as the football touches the hands of Polk, but that ball looked like it was going to go through his hands in these slippery conditions anyway. Penix, no problem throwing it, but that's twice Husky receivers have had their hands on the football and have it slipped through. On second and ten, is a throw to the far side, also incomplete. Polk again, that time he was led back into the field, and the hit made by the true freshman, Jermon McCoy. You don't see that very often. You know, it's 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 a good play by the freshman, but the ball is behind him, and it's an easy play for the young man to make. You know, you know they're going to go after him when he's out on those islands. A good effort. That time, Polk looks like he does have his hands on the football, but because it's behind him, McCoy at a White House, Texas, makes a great play. Hit a pick last week against Stanford. He's he's a quality player. Yeah, remember the first series, three for three on these third downs. Let him do a touchdown. Let's see what they do here. Will Nixon, sophomore from Texas in the backfield. Penix back to throw. Again, has plenty of time. And on the move, delivers a long throw again high and off the hands of Jalen Pope. So they target him three times, three incompletions. Ryan Cooper in coverage that time. Now Trent Bray is known this year to walk six guys up on a lot of these third downs. Tries to confuse the offensive line. He showed six, then drops two of them. This is a four-man rush. They're playing some zone in the back behind that. And man on one side, zone on the other. Could, could, could completely confused Penix and these receivers. And... Nowhere really to go for that ball. Ball's too high. Jack McAllister hasn't done much punting this year. This is just his 29th. Handles the wet ball in the snap and boots it away to Gold, who makes the fair catch at the 34. It's a 41 yard boot. So DJ and the Beeb is back to work. Seven apiece here in Corvallis. If you enjoy a football game, so you're going to be there Monday Night Football. Super Bowl rematch as the Chiefs go for a payback against Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. 8 Eastern time. Peyton and Eli on ESPN2. It's the Kelsey brothers head-to-head. -head. Jason given a lot of credit by Travis for kind of rescuing his career when they were at University of Cincinnati. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. That's obviously become huge stories on and off the field and have their own podcast. And Who'd you pick in that game? Uh, I game Chiefs game. because they're at home. Yeah. <laughs> Second possession for the Beavers. And Martinez spins and is knocked down after a short game. Jabbar Muhammad came up and hit him. And we were talking at the break after watching that first series. Yeah, I think Washington on these early downs, they're going to have to walk eight, sometimes nine guys up and ask their corners to hold up on islands. They're overmatched up front. This Oregon State offensive line is legit. 
Washington is their best defensive lineman as far as defending the run is Thule 91 and he's on a pitch count so you're gonna have to get linebackers downhill and safety's cheating up on first and ten which leaves you susceptible to first and ten or a uh, play action pass on the way down Martinez again spins inside first down running hard out near midfield got 12 more before Hampton got him down I mean, you, you've got to be able to make plays in space, and right here you're there to make a tackle, and you, you swing and miss. You Ali miss. said that, by the way, Kirk, two Patalas down already now. Look who's down on the field for Washington. Raylan Goforth, their linebacker, the SC transfer being looked at. He's down on one knee. That's not a good sign. Examining that right leg. They have had so many injuries on this side of the ball. Mention Thule up front. The safety concerns they've had for for a number of weeks now in the back end. Asa Turner and Cam Fabiculanen both out. They hope to get them back for the Apple Cup next week against Washington State. But again, with Tupatala down, he was a surprise scratch. Already thin at linebacker. You don't want to be thin at linebacker and safety when you're dealing with a physical no. running game. To yeah. say the least. And, and it's not just being physical. It, it's the eye discipline. It's the communication on the road like this against a team that, that uh, sometimes can show run and sometimes fool you with a play action pass. So that's where those safeties really can come in handy. Ta keep talking about the importance of eye discipline. And now you got linebackers out there that uh, just got to be tuned in. Bruner's got to have a big night. By the way, he is fourth on the team in tackles, 42. So he, he's played a lot of football. Martinez makes a cut. He swore to lose about a yard. Milofocio got him. Uh, he's the leader of that defense. They said last week, early in that Utah game, the Utes were moving the ball up and down the field, put a lot of points on the board. And at halftime, they went in and talked as a group, and they said, Eddie just took over the room. You know, said some things, fired them up, talked to them about what they needed to do and the kind of passion they needed to play with. And they shut the Utes down in that second half and pulled away with a good victory. He's your guy in the middle, number five. He said, this is not us. This right. is not who we are. And they yeah. were excellent after the break. So second and 11, Isaiah Newell takes a turn at tailback. It goes about 225 as well. They don't have any small, fragile backs on this team. Sets up a third and seven. Now that time, Bruner did a good job of getting around a, lo a lot of traffic to be able to get his head in there and make a nice play. So now we got a third down. This is the whole goal of Washington. This is what they wanted to do, try to get DJ Uwe Unglele and this Oregon State offense into these obvious passing situations. And then dial it up, get as much pressure as you can. It's not been an area that's been a strength necessarily consistently for Washington. They're 124th in the nation in sacks. It's a run all the way. Uyangale hits a crease, breaks a tackle. A flag comes down very late in the play. It's back in the holding zone and it's going to ruin what would have been a nice first down run. 11 good, the, the center. Offense, number 70. 10 yard penalty. Still third down. Missed the last three games, returns tonight. That's a critical mistake. Yeah, and, and what he saw, he has this option. There's nobody, because they spread him out, there's no linebackers. The, the hold's going to be the center, but that's what DJ saw. It's a good call. That's right behind where he went. Levin Good, 70, ends up holding Braylon Trice, who's an edge player, but on that third down play, they moved him inside to get more pressure. So his quickness caused that holding call. It's a good spot by this Pac-12 crew. That did obviously impact the play in a big way. But instead of a first down in UW territory, it's now third and 17. Now they move Trice outside where he normally would be. 
Huskies really crowding the line. They only rush three. With eight in coverage, Uyangale makes a long throw to the sidelines. It's incomplete. Silas Bolden at 5'8 went up and tried to grab it. But UW's defense, with the help of that penalty, gets off the field. Yeah, and ZTF is, a, is an edge player that's known for his ability to rush the, the passer on third down. Instead, they drop him. And that's number four, who you saw go up high. That ball somehow cleared his hand. Maybe he got a fingertip on it. And it got right on to, to Silas Bolden, but a good job of cleaning it up by Eli Jackson. Josh Green, a backup punter for three years, now gets his chance this year. And it's a high snap, headed to the end zone. And he will just boot it out of the end zone. That's a penalty. You can't do that. You can't blatantly kick it out of the end zone to avoid a recovery by Washington, can you, Bill? No, no, you can't. But, but the ironic thing is... Illegally kicking the ball. Kicking team number 37. Penalty results in a safety. Yeah. It's a spot foul. It's going to be a safety whether you take the penalty or not. You see that sometimes when the ball's in the field of play and the guy wants to boot it to... It, it's a smart in some ways. It's a smart play and guys don't we, give the other team a chance We keep talking about the quarterbacks and, and the conditions and how are they going to handle the ball? And here we go the first time that it impacts the game. It's the special teams It's just a snap that gets away and goes up and over the the punter never really had a chance air mails it. You hate to call out a long snap or we only seem to mention the name when they make a snap like that But Dylan black air mailed it and with wet hands, you notice that the punters don't wear gloves. You're up there trying to make the catch. And maybe not the last special teams miscue we see tonight in these conditions, but UW gets a 9-7 lead, and we'll get the football right back. And, and I, I got to go back to that holding call, because that holding call when they would have picked up the first down on, th that was a third down play. They get the holding call that takes them way back behind the sticks. Incompletion on third down sets that punt up, so it leads to a safety. And now you have Penix and the Huskies offense back out on the field. Everett Hayes kicked the ball off the tee from the 20. Ghana standing back to the Washington 15. And he'll have to drift back to the 12. And Ghana bumped into one of his own blockers, and they don't get the kind of field position they hope for. Well, Kalen DeBoer and the Huskies are in waters that are uncharted going back to the championship year in 91, 10 and 0 for the first time since then, trying to sail out of Lake Washington with the rest of the flotilla there. The CFP is the goal. They're here in Corvallis. Win it here, they get to Vegas, win there, and they're off to the CFP. But the Beavers here in Corvallis, <laughs> look at the Beavers have chopped down all those trees. They've chopped yeah. down the dreams of lots of teams who've come into this they place. Have. They have. I go to Harrisonburg. You guys are making cartoons. That was beautiful. I like that. Excellent creativity there. Play fake on first down. Penix will launch downfield. That's a doomsday battling, and it's incomplete. Ball was over his head. He was kind of turned around there. He got behind McCoy, but didn't really eye up the ball. Pretty good coverage for a freshman on this receiver. I mean, I, it, it gives him a cushion, but he's, he's pretty close in phase. Yeah, a little grab there. Finds the ball late, but I think of Doomsday because he never really saw the ball himself. It's a good no call. Penix has missed on his last four. Muskie's pretty much ignoring the weather. You'd think maybe get Dylan Johnson in the run game going early. So far, it's been the aerial attack. Has plenty of time again. Downfield throw, almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of McCoy. That time he was looking for the tight end, Devin Culp. That's one of his worst throws of the season. Yeah, watch Culp work and turn. But I, again, it's all about timing with Penix. Watch when he gets to the top of the route. He works it out, then he turns in. Or well, Penix is already starting to throw. And they're just not quite on the same page. But I love the anticipation. Colt made that huge catch against SC at the Coliseum a few weeks ago where you and I and our crew were there. That time, not on the same page. So now we got this third and ten. A lot of shifting around. The, one of the shiftiest teams in the country. Three receivers bunch left on this third and long. Pressure comes. Penix escapes. Long way to go with his legs. Going to get there. 
Stiff arm and an athletic play. Penix does move the sticks. An 11 yard scramble. Well, th this is a, a foot race between him and a backer. You got man coverage. They're spying him. He's not necessarily a guy that gets out of the pocket a lot, but he is athletic enough. Nice stiff arm. Awareness of where he needed to go. Extends the ball past the sticks just to be sure. So good job on another third down conversion for the Huskies. They're now four or five. You got that long arm out there and just shoved Arnold to the ground. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Johnson knocked down after three yards by Mascarinas Arnold. Yeah, that, that's who they were in that first drive. You know, I thought there was enough of Dylan Johnson. Of course, they're going to rely on the pass, but there was some threat of that running game, and they can do that themselves. It's not just Oregon State. So Washington with that safety and the bad punch snap. The difference leads 9-7 after a quarter here in Corvallis. We're back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. You know, if they love a rainy night, but they're certainly prepared for it. Welcome back to ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. Start of the second quarter here in Corvallis. Of course, the Huskies very much alive in the CFP chase. And on Tuesday night, the latest CFP top 25 will be revealed. 7 Eastern on ESPN and on the app. No real drama yet. Most of the top contenders getting through so far, but Washington under pressure here tonight. And Penix on an opening drive, 4 of 5, 51 yards and a touchdown. Since 0 for 5. And the near interception. End around Bernard shows some speed. Two flags come out as he's tackled by Ryan Cooper after a short game. Flags coming in from everywhere. Penalties have been a problem for the Huskies this year. One of the more penalized teams around. Holding. Holding. Offense. Number 88. Ten yard penalty. Still second down. Those can be drive killers in conditions like this against a defense this tough. It's like Quentin Quentin Moore. Quentin Moore, they're, they're stacked up. Yeah, he anytime you get a back that gets to that edge, you always want to look this, to the inside and wonder if that tight end or receiver had to lock on to somebody, and he did. Moore grabbed onto that jersey. He's, they're spreading it out empty. Two are five wide receivers. Beavers not showing blitz. And whistle before the snap. And that'll cost him five more. It's tough enough in this place. Offense, number 72. Five yard penalty, second down. This is a tough place. Their defense is much better at home versus the road. and. I mean, the flinch right there. Yeah, the center. Center, you know, he's anticipating when he wants to snap the ball. And with this crowd noise, that was their biggest concern coming in here tonight was the communication, just being efficient. Second and 23. And it zips it up in the air, and it's incomplete. Caromed off Jalen Polk, Ryan Cooper in coverage. Holly? Well, guys, we're seeing the Washington receivers drop some passes they normally catch. Jalen Polk came over to the sideline last series, got a football super win, had someone keep throwing it to him. He's taken off the gloves. He's barehanded out here. They are struggling to adapt to this wet football right now. It is torrentially raining. He's the guy that's sitting pre I hope it rains all night. Let it rain. No, he's Having struggles with the conditions Penix right now. is late on a lot of his throws tonight. I don't know if it's the conditions or they're getting confusing him. There's another throw right off the hands of Jalen Pope. Took the gloves off. Didn't help. Weather becoming an issue, not for the quarterbacks, but for the receivers. He's going to try to go to Polk, but but again, normally when Penix would throw the ball, it would be right now. The ball's out. Now he's looking to the, you see his eyes, he's looking down towards the middle of the field. Then he comes off late. By the time he comes off late, even if he completes that, it's going to be tackled well short of the first down. So I'm sure they're going to get on the sideline and talk about finding that timing and rhythm. Let's keep an eye on the snap and the punt by Jack McAllister here. It's a low snap. He has to go down and scoop it up and hits it off the side of his foot. 
It's a shank that's going to get a fortunate bounce for Washington. They had two returners back there. The ball didn't get neither near either one of them ends up going 43 yards be something about that spot for the special teams because that was a, another iffy punt this time for washington so we saw that safety up the ground ball play. here nice one hot play yeah. but then the shank got lucky with the bounce spirits not dampened in the oregon state student section taco bell live my student section of the year contest Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Must win for the Beavers to keep Pac-12 championship game hopes alive here. A thousand plus standing room ticket. This is a beautiful stadium. You can't really showcase it because the weather won't let us fly the blimp or the drones, but it's refurbished. They made it smaller, but it's louder because of the roof on this place. Aiden Childs. He comes in in the third series of the game is a very talented freshman from California known mostly as an electric runner but he can sling it too with yeah, completion yeah, yeah and when you talk with these coaches you talk to Jonathan Smith and and anybody really about the future of this offense DJ Uyunglele is a story this year but the future is Aiden Childs he can run it he can throw it understands the offense interesting time bring him in here it's the regular time in the third series. We yep. might see some more in the second half as well, depending on how things go. They get a misfire here, so it'll cost them five yards. No, I say interesting in a game like this with so much at stake, just stick with what you do. You know, that's your rhythm, that's your pattern, that's what you've always Ball felt start. good about. Offense, number 75. Five yard penalty. Second down. You got some mop up reps, not just the spot duty within the game because of the blowout. Last week against Stanford, he was actually five of eight, threw it for 75 yards. No matter who's back there at quarterback, you want to keep testing Washington in this run game at the line of scrimmage with this offensive line and this back with the two backs that they're using. Giles incomplete. The note was batted at the line. I think two Ale players. was there. Yeah, it was Ale, yep. Ale, a big man at 327 pounds. He, he gets the edge there on Bloomfield, the left tackle. It's a nice job of being able to get, maybe you don't get quite to the quarterback, but you're able to get into his face and get your hand up on the young guy. It's a big interior lineman, 6'6", six, six, yeah. 327. Huge. Out of Tacoma. So... Fresh into the game, a big challenge for Childs on third and ten. They heat him up and knock him down. Braylon Rice, an elite pass rusher, welcome Childs to this game. Now this is what you do to a young, a young quarterback. You walk both the backers up, but this one comes and then Trice comes around. Occupy all the offensive linemen on the right side. You bring that defensive end around your best pass rusher. Trice had nine sacks last year. He's got three and now four on the, on the year. I hear what you're saying, man. That is a tough spot in this weather to come into a game cold. I know. And the Huskies went after him. Yeah. No, what you're saying looks smart. Now they execute the snap, and the punt is low, but uneventful. On the bounce, tricky. It's fielded over there. And Bernard, despite the risk, makes a nice little return to about the 46 of Washington. Yeah, he somehow stayed in bounds, got a few more yards, and I think... They expected him to get. I thought he may have stepped out, but he stayed in the 46 yard line. 12 yard return after the 47 yard punt. So Husky set up near midfield. Let's see if they can get Penix back on rhythm and maybe get Dylan Johnson in the running game going. They haven't had much success yet. Yeah, he's only two of 10 on passes, five yards or more downfield. That first drive, it looked like it was going to be a long night for Oregon State's pass defense. Johnson hammers forward. Yeah, that was when they got Odunze loose. He caught three balls in the opening drive, but they haven't really looked his direction since. No, they haven't. And, and, you know, and he still has favorable matchups. Like, even right now, he's at the top. He's got McCoy on him, but they do have a safety over top to protect. Second and seven. Johnson takes the pitch, and he's knocked down. Good pursuit from behind there. A flag is out. Joe Golden knocked down the running back.
Beavers are pointing in Washington's direction. Justin Elliott in charge of the Pac-12 crew tonight. There is no foul on the play for a low block. It's third down. Yeah, I think they're going to look at a low block on Bernard. He swung and missed on who he was trying to block on a crack block, and then lost his, his footing, went down, and an Oregon State defender ran into him, and it, it, it had the optics of looking like a low block, but great job by this officiating crew coming together and uh, everybody communicating what they saw, and they wave it off. See what Penix can do on third and four. So efficient in the opening drive. A struggle since. They try to hand it off, and Johnson barrels free. It's a foot race. Dylan Johnson tracked down, lost the ball, and Oregon State falls on it. A long run and a turnover. Keely Arnold comes up with it. Oladapo knocked it loose as Johnson was trekking toward the end zone. Wow, if you're a Washington fan, watch the blocks on this right side and how it just opens up. There's no linebackers because they're all walked up. A little delayed handoff. You get a good block by the center, Brailsford, as you said, and now it's a foot race. And Oladapo does not give up on that play. His last-ditch effort is just take a swing. That's experience right there. This guy's played a lot of football. It's his 36th start. And Dylan Johnson's been so reliable this year for this Huskies offense, so durable, and he loses the ball right before he's about to break the plane for that touchdown. Oladapo has had just a comprehensive season. Again, he is so important right now when they're shorthand for the safety position. Has a couple picks on the air and now a forced fumble. Is that another situation where your jersey's a little slick? You got it held in tightly. Just haven't seen him do that kind of thing. First turnover tonight, the high snap. Oh, well, yeah, I'm gonna lay it to reach up and grab it. And Martinez is gonna be trapped behind the line by Latula Nasenova. Look at the snap here. Call snap go over. The punter said DJ needed Ooh. every inch to be able to go up at 6-4 to somehow not just secure the football, but he got it to Martinez. They didn't get a yard, but it's a heck of a lot better than that ball going over his head for another safety. Yeah, that high snap can, can mess up the timing. You want to get the ball handed off as the defense is closing in. From the end zone, DJ across the middle. Finds Anthony Gould, slips a tackle, he loses the ball, and the Huskies get it right back. Jabbar Muhammad made the recovery. It was knocked loose by Carson Bruner. And yeah, there's Bruner. We talked about how he had to step up, but this guy's played a lot of football. Plays with a great motor. And again, the conditions maybe contribute to this. Does a really good job of shaking Powell, number three to our right, right there. Now he's got a chance to try to fight for that first down, but we see these defenders. They, they've got awareness about the weather as well. Man, they're chomping at this football as much as they can to try to get these balls out. And right there, the big man does get it out with a good heads-up play by Muhammad. So now they get the ball back and enter the 19-yard line. Carson Ritter almost went to Oregon State. His younger brother, Braden, did go there, then transfer back to Utah. And his play has set up Penix inside the 20. Steps up, and a long throw kind of changed his mind at the last minute. Holly? Guys, after Dylan Johnson of Washington fumbled that football, trying to go in. First guy that meets him on the sideline is his head coach, Kalen DeBoer. Coach says, hey, are you okay, man? And then he said, I'm going to need you. Head up right now. Didn't want him to get discouraged in that moment. And look at this. Already back out on the field, and they do need him. Well, they do, because Penix is now... On an 0-for-8 streak. Completely out of rhythm. We haven't really seen this all season long. Hesitation on the handoff. Johnson finally takes it but gets nothing as Akili Arnold knocked him down. Now, th th this defense can fly to the football. And you're going to take this much time. You're going to allow these safeties to be able to read it, diagnose it. And then get downhill. They're so came into this game so worried about defending the pass. But when a play takes that long to develop, easy for these veteran safeties to get involved. 
Five receivers at the backfield on third and 11. How huge would this be for Oregon State after the fumble to stop him cold and force a field goal attempt? Penix for the end zone. Again, flags come out. He tried to get a Dunze as working against Ryan Cooper. And a long way to work back to the football. Very underthrown. And that's that seems to be the more you watch football, the, the one of the best plays is an underthrow go ball or a fade where the defender doesn't see the ball, the receiver fights back to the underthrown ball, and it's either a caught either a caught or an interference. Pass interference. Defense number one. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So on third and eleven. They get bailed out by the P.I. and they'll be set up at first and goal here. Yeah, Oregon State did everything they needed to do. They leave their best cover man, who is in a slot, number one, Cooper, one-on-one -on -one against one of the top receivers in college football. They draw a lot of pass interference penalties on opponents, the, this receiving core, for obvious reasons. And it's hard. It's hard on that underthrown deep ball. If, you, if you're not in phase, to not get that interference call. Two tight ends in the game. Johnson to the right of Penix. Keeper all the way. Penix around. Ryan and scoots in. And a penalty assisted touchdown drive. He cashed in the fumble recovery in the short field to stretch the lead. And yeah, they get him to the edge. He follows Bulo. Also Dylan Johnson. Chris, I always kid you because I know how much you love this. The, the pin and pull. Pin and pull. Seal the edge. Nice block by the tight end Westover to help seal it. And then you got Dylan Johnson and Bulo leading around. So the pin is they smash inside from the right smash. and then the left guys pull around. Yep, right? That's right. Holly is the queen of the pin and pull. Yeah, just, I'm used to long yeah, to the right. You can use receiver to, to pin. You can use tight ends. You can use a combination. As long as you kind of help set that edge or seal that edge. Penix feeling a lot better about things. The, the passing game is just not clicking. He's four for 13. But the takeaway right there is the fumble is forced by Bruner, recovered by Mohamed, and then the quarterback around right end. And the lead is nine in Corvallis. ABC Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Boost Infinite. Get unlimited wireless and the latest iPhone every year. Don James and the co-national champs. Steve Entman was the big defensive tackle on that team. He's the highest finisher for UW in Heisman Trophy voting. He was fourth that year. Pennings, of course, trying to be the first Husky to win it. But uh, these conditions are not going to make it easy to pile up big stats tonight. And far more important anyway is the team chase for the Dr. Pepper National Championship trophy, which is made a stop here in Corvallis. And that's why to put both the races, one for the National Championship, one for the Heisman. I feel like it's Bo Nix had a huge day today, but it was against Arizona State. Kind of feels like Bo Nix and Michael Penix, if they get to Las Vegas, would be a great matchup for that. Silas Bolden on the return, still going, and stopped out near the 30. There'd be plenty of plot lines if those teams get through unscathed. CFP, Heisman, all of it on the line. Kevin Nagandi, what do you have? First time now for our Chick-fil-A move on the field. Down 13-0 without Jordan Travis, Florida State. They've scored 24 straight, Bob. No doubt about it. Running the football, Trey Bench and Cole Feely. they got to lean on this running game without Jordan Travis. 24, 13 early parts of the third quarter. Florida State leading North Alabama. Back to Chris and Herbie. Now they're going to face Louisville in the ACC championship game cards. Wrapped up that by beating Miami, but they have a visit to Gainesville, the rivalry game against the struggling Gators next Saturday due to the Seminoles. Now it's a nine-point deficit for DJ and the Beavers offense here. Play clock down at two. Martinez makes a nice cut. Damian Martinez runs over a man and barrels out near midfield. He ran right over Michelle Powell. And you get behind the All-American right here, Fuaga. He's one of the best tackles in the country. Does a really good job. Poor job by the linebacker and safety filling there. And there's the physicality of Martinez. You know, not only is he, is he physical at 232, I think he's got as much balance as any big back you'll watch play this year. 
And Powell found about that 20 yard gain. Another free play. Uyangalale is going to chuck it downfield deep and incomplete. Gould, no chance to work back. Eliza Jackson was in coverage, but the Huskies again jumped off sides. Yeah, good hard count there with, with uh, DJ Uyangalale. Just trying to draw these guys Offside. off, try to slow them down Defense. a little bit. Number 52, five yard penalty, first down. It's great to see him in this style of offense. We're just so used to him in that shotgun at Clemson. And of course, this entire year, it's been 52% of the time he's under center in control stings. It's a different tempo and a different feel. Had never Davis. called plays in a huddle, Kirk, no. in his life. So what's that adjustment yeah. like? It took him until really middle of camp when they announced him as a starter. Martinez, when he left, dragged down. He worked hard. It wasn't immediately smooth, said Jonathan Smith. But in the spring, it was raining a lot in those spring practices, and things were not going great all the time. But he's went yeah. back to work and got better as the season's gone on. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, to come into a, a program like this, it, it's more of a developmental program, really, to be honest. Being they'll bring guys in and they'll work with them for a year, year or two, and they develop them. They can switch them from a position into another. And for him to come into that and win this team over says really a lot about about his approach and how he came in with humility. Second and one. Martinez bouncing off people. He tests your will as a defender. 11 more yards. I, I, I would just keep going in this round. I, you keep wearing down Washington. Make them rotate bodies like they're doing in and out. And then you can slip in a play action if you'd like. But they're happy to commit numbers down. It's going to give you a favorable matchup to a tight end, to a receiver. But I think more than anything, that's your DNA. That's who you are. And, and with the conditions the way you are, just keep pounding the football. He's a very quiet guy, but he does talk with his pads. As someone in this conference said earlier this year, Huskies are pointing at a receiver. They think he flinched. There's he no flag. Martinez this time has to change course. Makes a beautiful cut and rips off 11 more. Well, that's your biggest fear when you defend these guys. Braylon Trice got in there. He actually gets under the block and is in the backfield. Here's the movement that they were upset about. That's a flinch. Should have been called. They missed it. That's what Washington's point to. It's the backside cut on the outside stretch play. Man, that's how many times did they bring that up on our Zoom? Guys, it's the outside. It's the patience of Martinez that worries you because not only can he bounce it, he can cut it back. So our backside linebackers and backside defensive ends, they've got to be gap sound. And that time he showed him why. He gets a break, and here comes Deshaun Fenwick spelling him. Uyangalale on the move, he zips up on the sidelines and making a catch. His felling couldn't keep his balance. Short game. And he got it greedy there. If he would have gotten that ball out in a hurry while felling was open, he waited and waited and waited because he wanted to go downfield to the deeper throw, but it was taken away. And by the time he got it out to Velling, Velling's running out of bounds for only a one yard gain. He could easily picked up six or seven yards there if he got it to him quick out on the edge. It's a tight end kind of night, isn't it? Velling oh, yeah. is a very effective red zone weapon. He's got eight touchdowns. Most of any tight end coming into today. Has nice. run the football and play action of those tight ends kind of night. Van Wick will be dragged down. Quick penetration there by Carson Bruner who's having a big first half. That is a great job of being able to work around the blocker. The blocker's trying to come up, trying to climb to that second level. By the time he came off the double team to get up there, you saw Bruner instantly seeing the ball is in Fenwick's hands and does a good job. That's just instincts, man, and quickness. Plays with such a good motor. Different look, Kirk, here on third down. Both Fenwick and Martinez in there, two back look. I yeah, haven't seen that tonight. They need nine. Just one of three so far. DJ for the end zone, broken up beautifully. Jabbar Muhammad is tough to beat. Got a long arm out there to knock it away from Gould. Man, Jabbar down. Muhammad's having a game. He's out there on islands, and he's holding up. It's a great little slant, little burst to the outside, trying to work that corner. And there's that length, Chris, that you talked about. He's not that tall at 5'10", 183 pounds. He's like all night. Bring that all night. But he's made a few plays tonight. So Atticus Sappington will come on for the field goal. Hasn't attempted one the last three games. 
He's made his last seven, though, from 38 to yeah, they just get the ball spotted, and he just makes it through the right upright. Nothing is easy in special teams tonight. Beavers cut into the lead, 16-10. 4 feet 7 at halftime. <laughs> well, Josh Green was the punter, had the problem earlier. The snap airmailed over his head, but check out the job he did as holder here. The snap isn't perfect. He has to reach back, get it down, and give Southampton a chance to kick it, and that is well executed. These guys do practice a lot in rain to try to be ready for this. Especially up in the Pacific Northwest, right? So it's another Tuesday practice. DJ said in the spring, 10 straight spring practices out here at rain. He says, every time it rains, it clumps them down because we're going inside from here. No, Smith said, you stay out in the rain and practice. You, you better. Nights like this. Everett Hayes to boot it away. And Gata feels it at the 10. Makes a nice little move. And he's had some quality returns. Didn't create great field position, but he'll spot it at the 23. Affleck trivia question. Last quarterback to have a 10-win season for two different Power 5 teams. So, Uyangalale did that, of course, at Clemson. And the Beavers a chance at a 10-win season. Greatly enhanced if they can come from behind and win here tonight. been more than an hour since Penix has had a completion. There's a very long throw. Again, they target Polk, but he's well covered that time. Joe Golden made him uncomfortable in the pocket. I mean, we could talk about the weather because, I mean, it, it obviously could be affecting the receivers as much as it is Michael Penix, but look at the coverage. I mean, the, these guys are playing really good football. I don't want to take away from what Oregon State's doing to impact Washington and what, what they're trying to accomplish tonight. I think they're searching right now. Remember, we've seen a couple games this year where Washington's offense just wasn't clicking. So we can talk. I know the weather's a, a, a problem, but we heard all week it's not an issue for Penix. So he's got the biggest hands maybe in the country of any quarterback. Johnson slips a tackle, barrels downfield. If they could get him going, that would make the receivers and quarterbacks night easier. He got 11 that time. Fatanu, the, the left tackle. I love watching this guy play football. What an athletic big man. 6'4", 315 pounds. Anytime I'm running, if I'm Dylan Johnson, I'm getting behind 55. Johnson averaging 6.6 .6 in his 11 carries so far tonight. Penix finally with a completion. It had been about an hour and ten minutes of real time since the last completion. Did you ever think no. see a game with Penix? Especially after that, that opening drive. But look at his hand size. I mean, it looks like a peewee football. So it's not about him being able to deal with the conditions. That's earlier tonight. The index finger in that left hand right up near well, the tip okay. of the yeah. ball. Yeah, so he handles the ball well. I think it's more about what Oregon State's doing. They're mixing up their looks, giving him a pre-snap, post-snap. Even right now, they're moving those safeties around, dancing around. 11 inch is the hand measurement. That's something they always check at the combine. That's look, some look, of the biggest in the world. All these different movements. His corners are up tight. Safety switching. Just trying to affect his reads. Pressure. It's picked up. Long throw. And it's off the hands of Jalen McMillan. Again, returning tonight, the excellent slot receiver trying to make an impact. Jaden Robinson in coverage. Here's the here's the McMillan as a slot. An okay route. He's still trying to recover from that knee. Good job in the pocket, giving him the time that he needs. That ball goes right through his hands. And in his defense, he's not played a lot of football. He had six snaps last week. Really hasn't played since going all the way back to Michigan State. He had three touchdowns in that game. Had Almost 300 yard games to start the season before he hurt that knee and I think you're right based on that round He's not fully back Play clock at two Quick throw making the catch is Giles Jackson who spins nicely and dives forward They're gonna spot him right near the marker McCoy was there, but it is a first down Well, they had seven or eight guys up near the line of scrimmage You're gonna leave your corner on an island and trust that he can make this play. That's the freshman McCoy who's been holding his own 
And that time, because the ball got out early, the timing is better. It gives you a chance there with Jackson to make some plays after the catch, and that's what got him the first down. To beginning to get some of the rhythm back, they're in Beavers' territory. Tybo Rogers, the running back, is in the slot, bunch to the left. Penix is looking to his right, now flips it across the middle. It's a screen. Modunze tackled nicely to the open field by Arnold after picking up about six. Arnold just came off. He, he was in coverage right here. Watch this play. It's actually really good considering the convoy of people that he had. He comes off that tight end, eyes flipped. Now you got three linemen, and he's just being a player, just being in, completely trusting his instincts and his eyes to be able to make that play. Rome's like, where did he come from? Yeah, it's like, I got, where are my three linemen? They're downfield. Rodgers in the backfield now. His first carry of the night has to dodge a tackle and then gets knocked back right at the line of scrimmage. Akili Arnold filled quickly and it's third down. These, these brothers live together. They've become really the pulse of his defense. One at the second level, five, Easton. And then you just saw Akili make that play on the back end. Yeah, it's a dream, they say, to play yeah, with really. each other here in college. And they, they are inseparable. As he said, they, they live together. Yeah, they really cool. complex together. Noisy on third and four. He'll take off again, and Penix is going to slide a second third down scramble for the quarterback. Sets him up at the 32. Oh, they, they, again, they don't fear at all the threat of Penix taking off on third down. Look at these backers, their heads, they're thinking about these routes, these inside routes. There's just no one there to account for him. And he's able to see that pretty quickly. Didn't hesitate, didn't sit back there, hitch, hitch, hitch. He said, third down, I'm going to take the quick yards I can get for that first down yardage. Final minute now of the first half as Penix heaves it down into the end zone. One of the best in his position in college football. Well, I think during breaks we were talking about it. I think a lot of people who watch Washington play, you're waiting for a doomsday. They went to him early. Again, one-on-one. -on -one. This style of defense, that's what you do, and it's your best cover man with Cooper against one of the top receivers in the country. See how he turns his head at the last second, loses the football, and in the process, loses a doomsday. Going for two here, Kirk, to stretch the lead. They hope to 14 before halftime. With the arm strength and the accuracy of Penix and the ability to win contested catches, that 9-1 to one combo has been tough to stop. Empty backfield here. They're looking that way again. And that time it was just over the head of Odunze. McCoy was in coverage. The Penix out of rhythm for a long spell of this game. Gets it back in this drive. And with the chainsaws buzzing and the rain falling, finds Odunze for a second time tonight. Down to one halftime report minutes away. Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagandi here with you. Ugly game for Texas right now. We'll have the highlights. Big day for Bo Nix. Devastating night for Jordan Travis. Yeah, no doubt. And everybody's going to look at the injury and say Florida State's title hopes are finished. I say not so fast. They got a good running game, two top-notch wide receivers, and a defense still there. Still hope for Florida State. Highlights coming up for Florida State trying to come back. They were down 13-0. They've scored 24 straight. That's coming your way. Back to Chris, Herbie, and Holly. That's good conversation now, how the Knowles will go from here, but just you can feel terrible for Jordan Travis. His six-year football to have it go out that way when they're on the verge of playing for some big things. Silas Bolden. He's tough. He, he's he's five seven, but he's harder to bring down than you think. Russell down there, 47 seconds for halftime. Athletic trivia question answer. Apologies to Jack Cohn because he is the answer. Power five, two different teams, 10 win seasons. I forgot that they, they got. You didn't have that. That huh? was in Notre Dame. I did not. Oh, yeah. Jack Coney is a lacrosse player out of, uh, out of New Jersey, I think. Or, no, 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 Long I know Island. of him. You, did, you didn't know the answer to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I didn't hear you say it. I, oh, I'm <laughs> waiting on you. Oh, you. oh, you just thought of it. Oh, okay, yeah, one of those. I, I, I didn't say it, but I knew it. Mm -hmm. He's all over it. See if they play it conservative here. They do have three timeouts. They'll take a shot here. Luyangalale pulled out of that football. He escaped the oh. sack somehow and takes off. Scampers for about 11, does use up 10 seconds of time, but Buddy was going to get knocked down behind the line. Yeah, bo both of these great pass rushers off the edge collide, hit each other in the backfield. He's able to show his strength. This looks like more of what he would do at Clemson, right? This is the Clemson DJ Uyunglele back there in an obvious passing situation, keeping a play alive at 252 pounds. Man coverage, so once he got away from the rush, he's able to get some good yards, still keeps the three timeouts by getting out of bounds. They get the ball to start the second half. They're just looking for a field goal here. They gotta go a long ways, maybe 35, 40 yards to give Sappington a chance, but that's a big chunk right there. Catch is made by Bolden. He's knocked backwards out of bounds. That's the chunk play they needed. They got 22. Comes from here and he walks across to the second level of this defense, gets behind the backers, in front of the safeties and he gets the ball early enough that he can protect himself from that big hit right there from Muhammad So 28 seconds, but still all three timeouts Husky showing pressure back out of it DJ has time, but overthrows Irish over there. Yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all. This isn't about the downs. This is about trying to get in position and, and keep in mind you're working with 24 seconds with those three timeouts. Again, you know, even though you're down, you're back deep in your own territory. Would you go out of this first half conservatively down by 12, even though you get the ball to start the second half? With his background as a thrower, I, I, I think this is a great decision to try to get aggressive by Jonathan Smith and his, his offensive staff. You're close right now to getting into field goal range, but another 15 yards. Yeah, exactly. About 15 yards would get Sappington within range of his career long. Eight in coverage this time. Lots of time across the middle. He squeezes it in, but it's incomplete. Bounced off the hands of his tight end, the Velling. Now 17 seconds. Belling is very sure-handed. You, you and I talked when they were down in the red zone. That's usually where he gets the, his opportunities, but that ball is knocked out of there. You can see that right hand by Goforth not get loose. Well, Lafoshia may have been in there too, got a, gotten a hand, and now time isn't clearly a factor. Back to the two-back look. Fenwick and Martinez flanking the quarterback. Muskies again up, showing pressure. This time they do bring some. We're going to lay a long throw that's broken up again by Jabbar Muhammad. Gets those long arms. He has had a tremendous half. It's a pretty good job by DJ Uyunglele sitting in that pocket and making this long throw. Shows you the strength. He really doesn't have a chance to get much into it, but still has the ability to get it out there. But, man, it's one half and a half. You see him get kind a of drew a box and it thumbs down, like, don't come in my area. Yeah. This is off limits tonight. Yeah, well, he's he's had a great, he's just not just a great half. I think he plays with so much confidence, like most good corners do. I mean, he's been asked to stay out there on, the, on islands because they've had to load up the line of scrimmage. He's playing great. Yeah, he's broken up three passes. So it looks like the Beavers here on fourth and ten, not going to come away with uh, a field goal opportunity to end the half. They do get the ball. We've seen the wet and wild conditions. We saw a snap over a punter's head, result in a safety for Washington, a whole bunch of drops, a couple of fumbles tonight. Kind of what we expected when we saw the forecast. Yeah, but I, I think the good thing is, you know, we'll see how this half ends. But was the thing if you're Oregon State, you don't have to panic. You know, there's still a team that wants to run the football, and, and they've had a lot of success doing that. I think you'll see them stick to that. Offense out there, it's way too long for a field goal, so they'll try to pick it up here. They, who, of course, can, can get a timeout if they can get to the Huskies 38. Pressure coming off the curve. It's intercepted. Jabbar Muhammad has had a monster half. Bruner looked like he deflected it, it and number one adding to a great half with a pick both these guys have had a great half now, How fitting is this that Bruner gets his hands on it? 
Really good job here by 42, climbing a ladder, and anytime that ball gets tipped over the middle, there's always a chance for somebody to come up with it, and it's Muhammad who's had both these guys have had that great first half of this defense. And Bruner stepping up, as Holly said, Alfonso Tupatala injured this week. It was a late scratch. Bruner says, I got you. He's forced to fumble and deflected a pass that's intercepted. And the Washington defense, at times, Kirk, it seemed like they were getting shoved around a left by the Beavers running game, but a couple of big plays. And the Beavers will get the football a must win. Going and safe to stay alive in this Pac-12 race. The Huskies can clinch a spot in the championship game of the Pac-12 with the win. They lead by 12 at halftime in a rainy night in Corvallis. Let's hear from Jonathan Smith with Holly. Well, Coach, you guys have been so good on third down all year. What do you have to do to be more effective and keep those drives alive like that last one? Yeah, no question. Third down are really both ends of it. we got to continue to execute on third down. Get us a long, a shorter third uh, down and distance for us. Vice versa, get them off the field on third down. This rain is a factor, whether you like it or not. How does it impact play calling and just game management right now? Yeah, it's a factor, you know, especially catching it. I think both passers are actually throwing it okay. The, the ability to catch it's been a difference. So we've got to regroup at halftime, get it sorted out. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. It's 136 total yards for what typically is a very balanced and potent Oregon State offense. 22-10 for the fifth-ranked Huskies. Capital One halftime report coming up right after these messages. The rain lightning up just a bit here in Corvallis. Set for the second half. Saturday at football on ABC. Presented by Capital One. This presentation of the Pac-12 on ESPN. 22-10. Huskies have the lead. Beavers will get the football in a few minutes here. Back with Chris Fowler, Kirk Herb Street, and Ben Herb Street. Three in the booth. Holly Rowe working in the field. Can't see him. He's down here. He's here, I promise you. Yeah, he's here. I'm looking at halftime. You got a crowd. Well, it's not the Golden Retrievers, but the Huskies who are on top out here. And, and, and Oregon State, they had some moments where they had the ground game going, but unable to sustain it. And now have a 12 point lead to cut into here. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, one of the things that they've been able to do is when they were moving and they were, they were showing what their really their personality is they had that great rhythm of running the football and, and pushing Washington around now Huskies made some adjustments so let's see if Oregon State can somehow get this going again to start this half Silas Bolden is knocked down at the 20 tremendous first half by a one receiver and one cornerback for Washington here's the Modelo Remarkable fighter moments. Now, you know, Dunze is the guy, right? And in fact, when Penix throws to him, he's five is seven for 79 yards and a couple touchdowns. You flip it over to the defense. Man, Jamar Muhammad has been everywhere showing his ability to play man to man here at the end of the half. A tip ball by Bruner goes up in the air. Muhammad comes down with it. And, you know, when you play in these big games, your best players need to step up. And one on both sides of the ball for the Huskies have been able to do that. He is just overflowing with confidence, Muhammad. You can see it in his play in the first half. Can they get Damian Martinez going? 86 yards in the first half, averaging more than seven a carry. For Odunze, he's been the one solid guy. Pope, who never drops the ball, yeah. has had a hard time tonight. McMillan doesn't really look 100%, but number one has yeah. been a number one receiver. Yeah, Odunze with five for 79. Every other throw, he's only three and 12. So when Washington has the ball, they're, they're obviously dialing up. We're used to seeing Odunze have that kind of night, but we're also used to seeing Polk and others also have that kind of night. But tonight it's been a one-man show by number one. DJ from the pocket, long throw wide, tried to get it to Anthony Gould, who was sliding out of bounds, and now it's third and ten. See, first and ten, they ran the football and got stoned. Tule, 91, who's out there on a pitch count, only he's coming off the field now. He only is allowed to play about 30 snaps tonight. He's their enforcer against the run, by far their best defense lineman on that first and ten play. He stones Martinez, now they're in second and ten. Behind the sticks, they throw the ball, they're playing right into the hands of what Washington's coaches want to do and how they want to stop this offense. Washington will spend a timeout on defense here. Remember how good they were last week after halftime. Utah in the first half scored touchdowns on four straight possessions. After halftime, you talked about that fiery speech that was delivered by Villafoscio. Total 
of 76 yards allowed. The Utes were one for five on third down. They're hoping to back that up here again tonight. Yeah, yeah, the great adjustments. And they've co-defensive coordinators and William Inge and Chuck Morrill, both those guys do a good job. You and I have been around the Huskies so much this year. We were kidding with them, like, hey, we're becoming the voice of the Huskies. But those guys finish each other's sentences. <laughs> they do. <laughs> right? we, do, yeah. we do these Zoom calls yeah. or in-person meetings, and they're, they're just pick up on each other's thoughts. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, there they both are. Sometimes you wonder, in a co-defensive coordinator thing, if one guy's kind of more the lead man, but these guys do a really good job of sharing those duties and really working together very well. We've got the specs going on a rainy night. Third and ten. They run a game up front, twist, and they get near DJ, and he throws a pick. Jabbar Muhammad has his second tonight. The quarter just having a monster evening. Braylon Trice closing in on DJ when he threw the ball. Uh, again, they're trying to affect the eyes of DJ. They're showing a too high look pre-snap, and then at the snap of the ball, safety comes down. They're just trying to mess with him. He's looking left, looking left. Good pressure by Trice. He doesn't even really look, doesn't feel that at all. Man, Muhammad right now is almost baiting him, begging him to throw the football. He was off. He comes back, try, feels that pressure, and a good job here by the Huskies getting another break in plus territory. That's a nightmare start to the second half of the Beavers. Now can their defense keep the Huskies out of the end zone? Dylan Johnson knocked down. A flag is out right in the holding zone. So the Huskies immediately moving backwards after getting set up here at the 22. Holding. Offense. Number 88. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's the last thing you need to do when you, you get a pick. You're set up very near the red zone, trying to build in a 12 point lead. Meanwhile, Oregon State on the year plus 10 in turnover margin, fifth in the country. They've taken care of the football, only eight turnovers all year. They got three tonight. The fumble and two DJ picks. The only way they win this game is they win that turnover margin. They're minus two in the night. DJ hadn't had a pick in the last five games. Penix on the screen. Odunze. It's all about the number ones in the white unis <laughs> tonight. He's knocked down. They get a chunk of the yardage back. It's going to be second down and about 12. Yeah, the Modelo moment uh, carries over into the second half with the great interception and now Doomsday getting his hands on the ball again. And there's a hands catch for a short game by Westover. It's going to set up a third and eight. This would be a huge win for Oregon State to force a field goal attempt. Keep it a two-score game as the Chainsaws get cranked up. Penix and this offense, for the most part, have dealt with this chaotic environment with a lot of poise. So Doomsday, more of a condensed look. They spread out after the snap, and the pass is to Rogers out of the backfield. It's a nice play in the open field by Arnold, and it's fourth down. Yeah, they, they gave him a lot of traffic to have to run through. That's a man beater. Trying to pick on a linebacker by throwing it to the back. Nice job there by Ryan Grubb and Kalen DeBoer. But instead of going for maybe a knockout shot here, they're going to just have to settle for a field goal. So good job by the Beavers' defense after that interception. So out comes Grady Gross. Sophomore from Scottsdale. Probably did not grow up kicking in a lot of rain. But he's gotten practice up in Seattle. This from 34 yards to make it a 15-point lead. And that was messed up. The, the play clock was winding down. Like kind of a false snap there. I'll back him up five yards on the attempt. Ball start. Offense. Number 88. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Look at the snapper there. Jaden Green kind of flinched with it and then drew the penalty. And backs up Gross for a 39 yard attempt now. Very solid season so far.
Kick is away, but he hooked it. And Washington comes up empty, squanders a chance to cash in the pick, and the lead is still 12. I don't know if the weather affected that. Just misfired. Is a sensation. B -b -b Benny here in the Jets. He's been flying all over the place. <laughs> he's building his brand, my friend. He's very popular. I mean, he's pot. We go to the hallway. He's, oh, look at this. He's got signs. That's out here. He had signs at game day. That's him on the plane flying from Virginia this after game day. To uh, He makes himself Florida. comfortable. He does not yeah. He has no problem with that. He's, he's treated like royalty, I can assure you. Oh, sweet guy. Martinez, nowhere to run. They pitch it to the boundary. Braylon Trice, better known as a pass rusher, got over there very quickly, joined by Adam Hampton. They don't score. Chris, they don't feel threatened at all by the pass game. So on first and ten, they see this ball going to the edge. Look at these white jerseys. They're getting off blocks. Braylon Trice, much as we're talking about Muhammad, Trice is having a night. Number eight doing a really good job. Hampton's able to come down. And first and ten, Oregon State's gonna have to start throwing the football because they've got they're running into a nine-man wall. Flying downhill. Trace, one of the guys of the many NFL scouts who come around to watch UW games with Penix in mind. They notice number eight, too. Here's a screen. Martinez has a couple blockers. Patiently makes a cut and is still running. Damian Martinez finally tracked down at the 45, but a huge play to spark the drive. They get 25. And we may have friendly fire. A couple of Washington players that ran into each other. But it's a good call here with that pass rush. Get the linemen, these talented linemen out in space. They do a really good job. These guys are big, but they're athletic. But back behind the play, Thule, 91. You'll see him run into a one of his own defenders. It was Hampton who, who has gotten up. There's Thule but, right there, and he but, rolls up on Hampton. Hampton's up. Thule's still down. He came in. Not at 100% to begin with, but how about these Oregon State offensive linemen? Downfield, 15, 20 yards, picking up blocks. You said how aggressive the Huskies' defense had been, Kirk. That screen was an excellent call by Brian Lindgren, the offensive coordinator, because it took advantage of the aggression. And that, that play, that could be a huge turning point. To get out of there with no points allowed after the second pick by DJ, he's really been in a little bit of a rut. And, and I think a, a play like that, now you follow it up right here, and as much as they want to run the football, it just this, you got to break a couple tendencies now. You, you know, maybe you play action. You know, maybe you, they've been loading up the line of scrimmage on first and ten, and they've been averaging like 5.6 yards a carry, so it's working. Pitch to the edge, it's kind of behind. The receiver Anthony Gould, he's spun down by Elijah Jackson. It's a loss. Man, Elijah Jackson has it tonight been tested that much, but man, he sees that ball thrown out there in a hurry. The whole reason that DJ Ungaloy threw that ball is because Jackson was 10 to 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. So he said, hey, I got a blocker in front of him, rip it out there. But 25 with quick reactions, able to get up there and ends up being a two yard loss. Gould lucky that the fumble bounced out of bounds. Hampton, who was down briefly a couple plays ago, is back in the game. Martinez makes a cut but spins right into the arms of Carson Bruner. How about the night he's having? We are at Zoom with him. We had a chance to talk to some of the players. We get done talking to him. You can just tell he's one of these guys. He loves practice. He loves studying film. He loves being a Husky. He is just all in. We were talking to him about coming back next year as Washington goes into the Big Ten. He was wound up about that. I mean, he's just one of those guys who just loves football. He's playing well tonight. He's talked about the journey, pushing those sleds around the first day of winter conditioning, thinking about moments like this. Now they're so close to their goals. Martinez again, it's a crease, and he was just tripped up as he was motoring to the end zone. That was Bruner who got a hand on him to prevent a huge gain. It's fourth down. Remember, this play could be talked about going wide, but instead, it's the cutback. Those backside blocks help set that wall. He gets north and south. I thought he picked up the first down, but... What a tackle, though. Yeah, that was... He lunged, got a yep. foot. It's fourth and about a yard and a foot. And you know who that was, right? That was Bruner again. Yeah. 
That's what I said. That, that was yeah. a saving yeah. tackle. It was a huge game. Maybe even a touchdown if he gets through there. Uriangela Lake keeping and bulldozing for a first down inside the 45 of UW. Can never go wrong with that. Fenwick off to the left, behind that left side of the offensive line, and a 252-pound quarterback with that extra blocker in front of him. Beavers, middle of one of those trademark methodical drives, trying to get this back to a one-score game. A very low yardage total for this offense so far. Uriangale keeps it, surveys, and throws across the middle, incomplete. Boy, Irish had a lot of space. Was running across the field, just missed him. He waited and waited and waited, and then by the time he decides to get rid of the ball, Braylon Trice, I think, may have impacted that with the pass rush. But you're right. I think he was trying to nav nav navigate and figure out where seven Hampton was. I think he thought Hampton was going to take that crosser away, but he ended up going downfield. He had all kinds of time to hit that that uh, that throw. Martinez gets around the right end, picks up about seven. Holly. Well, guys, Tuli Latuli Nasanoa is trying out that left calf. They put a new compression sleeve on it. He's testing that calf right now. He was already on a little bit of a play count. He's been out or injured since that Oregon game. They've been trying to get him back, but he is moving well right now. I'll keep you posted on if he can return. They hope they can get 30 snaps out of him tonight. That's about what he gave last week. But he is a key part of the defense, especially against an offense like Oregon State. Third and three. Martinez has the first down. He keep winding away. Bruner got him down, but they're inside the 35. Yeah, he's averaging almost six yards to carry. It's 105 yards on the night. Just keep pounding into this Washington defensive front. They've kind of been able to get back into their own rhythm. We talked about Penix trying to find it. He got back into it. And now Oregon State, on this drive anyways, Definitely back to being able to get their run game and their play action game going. Some fresh troops on the defensive front for the Huskies. Fenwick spelling Martinez, who's hit 100 yards rushing tonight with that last carry. Fenwick, he's pursued by Trice and knocked down behind the line. Another big play off the edge by number eight. Now they shoot gaps. Instead of working here, he's going to get inside of the left tackle, Gray. He's got power, and then he's got quickness to finish. You know, when you have that combination, he's, he's got leverage, 6'4", about 275, but he gets, you're thinking he's going to work, because the way he's aligned outside shoulder, outside shape, you're thinking he's going to get outside. Instead, he reverses and comes back though, underneath and surprised Gray that time. He drove Fenwick way back, but it's a three-yard loss where he first made contact with the running back. Ooh, young little, like, quick route underneath. Gould's got it, and he slides down near the marker at the 23. It is a first down. Clutch. Smart. You catch the football, catch the ball, and then after you make the catch, don't worry about trying to get left, you know, left or right. Get north and south. Don't get east and west. Just get north and south. Know where you need to go for that first down marker. You know, these receivers, they're, they're not necessarily always stretching the field. But they have really good feel and awareness underneath to find the space. Gould, a high school running back, learned to play the receiver position. Great returner as well. Takes the handoff there, slips out of a tackle. At that time, he got out of the grip of Trice, who's slow to get up. That's not an easy thing to do. He's limping, too. I tell you, that play has been well schooled by Washington this week that jet sweep when they see it on the opposite side coming their way these guys on the edge they're anticipating that that ball is going to be handed off and that's their responsibility he was there just unable to wrap him up like you said Chris second trip to the red zone for the beaters they were successful the first time 13th play of this drive and a flinch on the right side like that was Irish 
Full start. He got away with one earlier. Offense. He did. Number Same exact spot, lined Under up penalty. to the right, condensed formation. Still second down. This time they, they catch him. Remember when Washington was pointing that out? They were quick to point it out. Eight, They're saying yeah, five, eight guys put it now. Now you got him. Got it. Boy, every yard feels precious down here. And it, backs them up, makes it second and nine. And their red zone has been as good as there is in the country. I think top three all year. They're 97% effective and as far as touchdowns. They're third in the nation, so they do well down here. From the pocket pressure, hit as he throws. It's caught down inside the 10. Bolden driven out, but it's first and goal. Bandez gets him. Watch this move right here. Ben is a big guy, 300 pounder. That spin move. I thought he was going to make the play. There's the strength of Uri Ungulale. Watch this hit right here. Bang! But somehow, some way, he gets enough on that ball. And they pick up a first down behind the sticks. Pass rush is there. And DJ Uri Ungulale makes a play. Now play 14 in the drive. First and goal. Martinez back in the game. And he's going to be met right there by Bruner. And just relentless effort tonight all over the field. You mentioned how great they are in the red zone, Kirk. We'll, we'll check the run here. First. Yeah, check that. And there's Bruner. And watch the edge get taken away. Bang. You got defensive backs getting involved. The only empty red zone trip is when they faked a field goal against Arizona. It didn't make it every other time. They've got points, and as you said, it's almost always a touchdown. Yeah. Talking about 81% of the time on a season, you're scoring touchdowns. And you get backs that go 230 and a quarterback who goes 250. And a very strong offensive line. Uriangulari keeps it across the middle, and there's a pass interference call. It was an easy one as Unyagi was tangled up. It looked like Dixon. Thaddeus, Thaddeus Dixon, yeah. There's a backup corner. Yeah, easy call there for the officials, and Oregon State will pass get a first down. Defense, number nine. Foul curve in the end zone. By rule, the ball is placed at the two yard line. Automatic first down. Graham has kind of a been a big play receiver, not typically a red zone weapon. And that sets him up at the two yard line. And I think we all expect him to hammer downhill. They got big Isaac Hodgins, the defensive lineman, in at fullback again. Martinez slammed into right at the line of scrimmage, and a flag comes out. Oh boy. If that's a hold and it's in that area, that could be extremely costly. I think it might have been Velling. 88. Looked like he got some jersey off to the right there. Holding. Holding. Offense. Number 88. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat. First down. Well, the Beavers trying to overcome some self-inflicted wounds on this drive. And he, he's just trying to help seal the edge he gets that jersey right there with his left hand still Tommy Campton who leads the Huskies in tackles didn't it, it didn't affect him at all well he's playing physically he comes down into that box area almost like another linebacker just got a lot tougher now Kurt first and goal from the 12 DJ tries to scramble he picks up a couple look at the strength bulldozing down to the five made something out of what appeared to be almost nothing well this is a great play like you said things get a lot tougher he's gonna go quarterback draw there's not a lot of room there break a couple tackles and then go in and you carry a 300 pounder for a few more yards i great. mean dom hampton is a physical tackle he got knocked in his backside he's carrying d line that's a great individual effort right there now you're at second goal at the five yard line now you get right back to the rolodex of plays here on this for the 16th play of this drive. Martinez. And on play 16, the Beavers reach the end zone. Here they're going to walk. Get a lot of openings on the right side. 
Look at that. Look at how efficient this offensive line is. There is penetration by the linebacker right there, but there's Martinez's vision. And that's what great teams do in the red zone. It's about can you be efficient running the football down in that area and with this offensive line and a physical back with vision of Martinez, they can. Took almost 10 minutes. The 16 plays, it's officially a 78-yard drive, but they had 15 yards and penalties. So in reality, they moved it 93 yards of offense, and suddenly it's a five-point game late third in Corvallis. It was sunny when Curtis Wilson on the All-State bus rolled in here <laughs> yesterday. What's the All-State good hands play this weekend? Well, it's the App State and JMU game where college game day was this morning. What a game. JMU fought back to get this inning out into overtime, but it was App State. Caden Robinson, game-winning touchdown. They reviewed it. It stood, and their JMU's 13-game win streak is done. By the way, App State quarterback Joey Aguilar, 318 and 3 as they pull off a big upset and ruin James Madison's undefeated season. It was like 25,000 there for game day. The game day curse stripes. <laughs> oh, remember last year we were at State and they almost lost. It took a Hail Mary for them to avoid it. What a turnaround, Kirk. They had the pick by Muhammad. The Huskies had a chance to go up 19 if they punched it in. They go three and out. Rose hooks the field goal. And then Oregon State takes 10 minutes to cut this to a five-point game instead of a 19-point game. Yeah. And now Penix has got to come off. It's been a long time sitting over there in the cold and try to get the... But the offense reignited here, and those were some serious body blows that were thrown against Huskies defense. We'll see if Penix can give him a break and add to this lead when we come back. Washington coach Kalen DeBoer told me at the half that Michael Penix has done a nice job adjusting to what routes and throws are working in this weather, primarily the fade to Rome Adunze. He said throws into the body are catchable, throws through the hands half good report holly you got four receivers to work with it's been a long time since this husky offense was on the field that last oregon state drive taking 10 minutes johnson in motion Penix is looking back to his left and fires down the field to Odunze. that was right off his shoulder pad mccoy was in pretty tight coverage but that was catchable for one of the kings of contested catches yeah shoulder pad helmet area and i, and I think that the young corner gave up on the play because it took so long for that ball to eventually come i'll tell you what man mccoy's been holding his own Again, these guys, these corners are living on islands against these receivers. Not recommended by anybody all year with the way Penix can spin it. He bothered Dunze long enough for to yeah. the receiver from getting his hands up yeah. on the ball. Johnson going backwards on second and ten. And he'll lose three, and momentum has shifted toward the Beavers. Calvin Hart and Kane got there. Well, up the middle, Stone, now you get to go to the outside, and there's the speed of this Oregon State defense. You're in no man's land trying to bounce that against these guys. Two true freshmen now in the game for the Beavers on third and 13, a chance to quickly get the ball back to this offense. Penix with a long throw over the head of Westover. It's another three and out. Penix pointing like he wanted a flag. There isn't one. Well, this play's starting to get cranked up now. They can feel it. Now Penix right away after he threw it, like you said, he pointed. He may have a, a decent case there with his crossing route here to Westover. Oladapo did grab onto him when he was working, it, but it was in the middle of the route. But it's a no call. To McAllister, back to handle the punt. The rain has let up. And here's a flag before the snap. And they'll get back to five yards. Just that massive swing when the Huskies. Full start. Offense. Number three. 
by their penalties. Huskies had a chance, Kirk, to really stick in a dagger early in this half. You, you put this Oregon State team down 19 with a ground-based offense in this weather, they would have been That's a on knockout. the ropes. That's probably a knockout. Yeah. Punch. Instead, missed field goal. Yeah. Foul back to Oregon State. They put that big drive together. Now they're going to get the ball back. It's a low kick. It's returnable. Gould has a step. Gets a little momentum and gets out near midfield. So down five, 22 seconds in the third quarter, Oregon State takes over. Chris Quick, they're going to look at this real quick, just to go back and look at the little hole that they get away with. 28 right there, grabs on. It's a touch. It's a touch. That's what I think he wanted. It's a, probably a good no call right there. But you can see that Penix right away thought that it should have been. But I'm, I agree with the officials there. I don't think there was enough there to make that call. So the Huskies with a couple of three and outs, one went in scoring position, one backed up. And this Washington defense, we talked about, you know, they're depleted. Down a couple of safeties, down to Patala, one of their top linebackers. They were on the field forever. They got to go right back the out play. there. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team, number 18. 15-yard penalty, Oregon State keeps the ball, first down. Yeah, I think it was Irish, 13. He got tangled up. Disbelief in this fan. It was 13, not 18. It's right up here. They both kind of get tangled, but it was... I think it was the reaction. I think Irish is saying, what the heck's going on? Is Steen kind of trying to slam his helmet, his head down to the turf. Wow. But I thought that might be on both sides, but they put they push Oregon State back. They sure do. 33-yard line instead of the 48 to begin this drive. Smith cannot believe this. Check the board. Bill, I, don't you usually see offsetting there? Yeah, that pushed it ahead by 24. Yeah. Totally unneeded. That yeah. should have been a flag on yeah. that. Expect to see Damian Martinez continue to hammer away. This is 21st carry tonight. Couple yards added to his total of 111 coming in. Chris, I can't remember which game you called. That one right there, number there, one USC. Yeah, there have been upsets in this building. Number one SC, you called it on a Thursday night in 08. Number three SC in 06. Number eight Washington in 01, 05. All right, 2000 in, uh, season. Oregon was number five. So we've seen a lot of upsets. It's setting up a, for a heck of a fourth quarter. Against top 10 teams, they've actually won three of the last four. They love the giant killer, but they've got a lot to play for themselves. Fourth quarter coming up, five-point game. Huskies on top. Now, the Reeser effect is real. Beaver's hard to beat here. The one loss in the last three seasons was on a late Caleb Williams touchdown pass for USC last year. This game was a toss-up, so this would not add to the list of upsets oh. by the Beavers, but it would add to the list of top ten opponents taken down. I was just, it adds to the list of derailing an undefeated season for Washington if they find a way to win this in a fourth. We're going to lay in. Connects underneath. It's a very short game there to Gould that will set up a third down. Huskies riding that 17 game winning streak. Not all of them have been dominant. They've had to fight and claw and make plays at the end to win. That might be called for again. I, I would add to what's at stake for Oregon State. Yeah, they win this game. They, they've got the Civil War with Oregon and, and Eugene right down the road. If they win tonight, they win next week. They put themselves in a great spot to get to a Pac-12 championship themselves. So it's not just like you say, trying to upset Washington. They need four. Uyangalale was no deception there. They were all over him, but he still muscles forward for a game that'll make it fourth and a yard and a half. But they go for it in their own end here. Watch the penetration by 91. Remember, he's on a pitch count. He doesn't make the play, but he forces him to have to cut back, and that allows Washington's defense to make the play. Here we go, Kirk. Jonathan Smith with the offense on the field from the 41 and a half yard line, needing to get. A yard and a half on fourth. Fenwick is the back. Everybody expecting a keeper, and they get it. And Uyangalale still running. Spins free. 
first down, and much, much more still won't be denied. Down near the Huskies 30, 26 yards on fourth and one. Oh, he gets right behind Finwick and a great block here by the center. Fenwick is a downhill runner. This time provides a good block. Then it's just tough running by the 252-pound quarterback. He's dialing people up. That was Braylon Trice right there. Number eight, who's had this big night defensive end. He takes him on shoulder to shoulder. Gets another five to seven yards. Wondered if the body blows that they delivered in that last marathon drive it had an effect on this Husky defense. New position to take the lead here. And a pre-snap penalty. Full start. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Had to overcome two penalties on that last touchdown drive. Yeah, he's, he's had a couple where he's been close, and, and this time he's a great player. And this time he's just... A little bit early Chris you, we keep bringing up that field goal it wasn't just a missed opportunity for Washington but the building and the vibe and the energy I think they went from oh man would have been close we had our chance and then they missed the chance for a touchdown they missed the field goal and this building started to believe and then it leads them to that long drive so this building and, and, and game has changed completely from that point on Grady Gross, we said he's a normally reliable kicker. He missed a chance to ice the game against Utah last week. Would have given him a 10-point lead. They had to hang on late to win that one. Timeout taken. Well, since halftime, a lot of standing and watching for Penix and not much moving of the sticks. The two three and outs, the first came after the pick and the missed field goal followed that. And momentum is strongly with the Beavers at the moment now. Look at the time, and Penix is saying, this is one way to slow me and my offense down. Six plays in the entire second half. Young faces a first and 15 after the false start. Two backs in there. Newell ahead of Martinez in the I formation. Martinez has it and is stripped up. Short gain. Holly? Well, this senior offensive laden line is so steady and stout here tonight. They went through senior day ceremony before the game. Joshua Gray, his 44th consecutive start. Henley Bloomfield, Kuaga, they have been so good up front. I think it's interesting. Five team captains are nominated before the season and voted upon by the team. Half of them are offensive linemen, and you see why tonight they are leading the way up front. What a group playing. They played a lot of football together. Second and 12. Trying to protect the quarterback who flips it underneath through his screen and take it off and galloping down inside the 20-yard line is Martinez. 19 more. Well, they only rush four. But watch the line that Holly just talked about, how in sync they are on this screen. He sells it. And now you got some linemen downfield, and Martinez in space. So dangerous. We know how physical he can be, but man, this guy is a complete back. Looks like an NFL back playing college football. And he's only a true sophomore, 232 pounds. And one of those linemen Holly talked about, Henley Bloomfield, is on the field. We'll take a break. ABC Saturday Night Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Duluth Trading. Holiday the unaverage way. And the CFP rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Oregon State just missed getting ranked somehow behind Louisville at number 11. Florida State loses Jordan Travis, but Storm's back to beat North Alabama. Shouldn't change a whole lot. Texas trying to hang on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Something about going to Ames for Texas. They've lost the last two trips up there. So it shouldn't change a whole lot unless the Huskies fall here. Oregon State had not led all night. Down 12 at the break. A chance to take the lead here. First down. Martinez hit behind the line and dropped for a loss. That's Big Thule. Well, this is why the coaches said 91. <laughs> he's got to play. This is exactly what he can do. Submarines gets underneath, 
and still makes a play. That is not easy to do for a big guy like that. He overpowered Kirk Flavio Gonzalez, yep. who came in for Bloomfield, who was helped off after the last play. Yeah, welcome to the game. Meet Tooley. He lost that one. On second and 12, Uriangalale has great protection. Throws to the end zone, incomplete. Was just over the hands of Gould and out of plans. Jackson in coverage, and now a big play coming up third and 12. And Jackson is uh, in tight coverage here. He gets away with a little grab there, and if he had a little bit more room to work, he would have had a chance to put a touchdown up on the board, but I think Jackson understood where he was Forced him that back edge of the goal line. Is Smith thinking this is four down territory, depending on what they do on this play? Need to get to the five for a first down. Boyangalai running for his life and has to throw it away. Actually, nearly intercepted on the sideline, but Braylon Trice got there in a hurry, and he's looking at his right thumb as he gets up, fourth and 12. And it's one of those where you want to make sure you throw it away. Down five, they're going to kick a field goal here. Good job by Washington dialing in, and look who it is again. It is Trice. They have moved him around on those stunts. They moved him from the inside to the outside, so he affects that play. Louis Unglele comes down on that right hand, grabbing his right thumb. We're going to try to cut this to a two-point game. The Honorable Atticus Sempington on the kick. I don't know if he's named for Atticus Finch. He's able to get it through right there. Beavers chipping away, as Beavers do. A two-point game, 10-40 to go in Corvallis as they check out Louis Unglele's right thumb. Want more stats? Just ask Siri. Who leads college football in passing yards? That might change after this week. Michael Penix only twice this season held below 300 yards. Just 124 tonight as the two touchdowns to Odunze. But he's got to get back in rhythm. Got to get the body warm again. Get the offense warm again. And see what they go to in this series because... Oregon State with that 16 play touchdown drive follows it up with a 10 play field goal drive. Ngana breaks a tackle, flag comes out as he's knocked down at the 35 yard line. That's why a lot of coaches like the fair catch on the kickoff returns because he gets so many penalties, it's going to cost him field position. Last thing Penix and this offense need is to be backed up. In the return. Holding. Return team, number five. Ten-yard penalty. First down. It's Dylan Morris. So what do you do if you're Penix and you're one of the Heisman frontrunners and you've seen it and done it almost all? In but it'd be nice to get somebody other than Adunze involved as a receiver. Adunze, Adunze has six catches. West over the tight end has three. But other than that, Polk's been had, had six targets, no catches. McMillan, a couple targets, no catches. Somebody besides Adunze is going to have to make a play. Zero targets in the second half for Polk or McMillan. Oregon State student section right down there to the right. A Penix who hands it off on first down. And Dylan Johnson, that would help the offense get going. He picks up nine on first down. We, we know from being around this Washington team, that that gets overlooked. That's a great aspect of their offense is getting the ball to number seven. You know, Johnson lost a fumble earlier when they were in scoring position in the first half. That was the first time he's got it again. That's the first time a running back had lost a fumble in the DeBoer tenure. That's, this is its 24th game. They had not lost a fumble as a running back until that one in the first half. That's the first first down of the second half of the Huskies. That's amazing. Dylan Johnson's going to come out of the game. Looks like Rodgers will come in. The other thing is just the flow of the game. If, if we were sitting here before the game. This is going the way Oregon State would want the, this game to go. Look at time of possession, the style of football that's being played. The only thing that's gone against Oregon State's a big one. Minus uh, two in the turnover margin. It's like the last nine and a half minutes will be played in dry conditions. The rain has moved out of Corvallis. Play clock at one. Penix backpedaling. 
escaping and has to just heave it downfield. What a creative play in the move to Westover. How did he see the tight end down the sideline, Kirk? It reminds me of the play that we saw against USC. But this is a good job. Watch the release of this football, by the way. He just kind of slings it. And how he throws a ball like that accurately, I'll never have any idea. He makes some throws that just take your breath away. That was crucial. Looked like he was going to take a loss in the play and said the ball near midfield. Going again on first down, far side into traffic. He was targeting a Dunze, and Andre Jordan, the true freshman, tracked across, got a piece of it. I mean, it's worth taking another peek, Chris, just because of the, how unusual and accurate. He jumps in the air, the ball's wobbling, it's third down, and somehow the big tight end hits him right in the chest. Westover has been reliable. The only other target besides Adunze has made an impact tonight. That's his fourth catch. On second and ten, handoff comes to Will Nixon. Stutter stepping, but unable to escape the tackle of McCoy. Third down coming up. And let's not forget, while we're sitting here in a two-point game, you go back to that snap that went over the punter's head for a safety that gave Washington two points. And here we are at 22 to 20. Here we are at third and seven. And Penix needing to do something else special to keep this drive going and keep his defense off the field. He's, he's sensing blitz. He brings the tight end and a back to help him give maximum protection if they're coming after him. They are. They pick up the blitz. And the throw is off target. And Jeremy Bernard was guarded by Ryan Cooper, their best coverage guy in his fourth That's down. That's what I was thinking. He did a good job of bringing a tight end in the back end. He's got maximum protection, and then he picks on the best corner that they have. Ball's not thrown accurately anyway, but I was surprised he went after Cooper there. They got a couple first downs. They got some breathing room, and they gave their defense a breather. McAllister, though, to punt it away and try to pin the Beavers back deep. Gould standing at his eight-yard line. It's a high kick. And he'll make the fair catch and backpedal inside the five. So, with a two-point deficit, Uyangalale and the Beavers take over in the shadow of their end zone. 7.55 left. Blasters meeting in Seattle. Huskies roared from behind and then went on a marathon march. This is an 18-play drive, 92 yards, a couple of clutch third-down conversions like that, eventually setting up a game-winning chip shot field goal. They broke Oregon State hearts. So here, in reverse, is it deja vu, but DJ's turn. They take over at the five, down two. A couple of years ago here, by the way, it was Oregon State with a late field goal to win it after some heroics from the end zone fires across the middle into heavy traffic and the catch is made looked pretty cool that time i tell you he worked through his progressions from the right all the way back to the left when yagi made the catch yagi was kind of waiting there he's almost like a check down there but coverage got pretty tight but i tell you that's where we underlay's experience comes in handy a lot of trust in this yep. experienced quarterback thrown from his end zone there. Figure this is Martinez time on second and three. And he's boxed up to the left. This team runs a lot more effectively to the right than the left. From that hash, they tried to run into the boundary in heavy traffic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, and I think it's not just the offensive line. I think sometimes it's about the matchups up front. Remember, we've had some injury. Bloomfield has been out trying to work in some, some new personnel up front. Gonzalez has been up there. That, when he's gone up against Tooley, who, by the way, got penetration on that last play, that's why that play had to bounce outside. Tooley's had a huge night in the interior. Even when he's not making plays, he's impacting the run. Big moment here on third and three. Under pressure. Long throw. The catch is made beautifully. Gould stretched out at 5'8". Got his hands on the ball, and they keep the drive going. That's too good. 
Watch DJ gets hit as he throws his football, but he's strong enough to again get that ball out there. That is a catch by Gould. Known for his quick yards after the catch. This time it's sure hands on a critical third down deep in their own territory to keep this drive alive. He doesn't make that catch. They're punting. And this has a very different feel. Now let's remember that one. This time, good protection. Long heave downfield in the coverage. They just should stop trying Jabbar Muhammad. It's just not open for business tonight. Bolden was the intended receiver. Just, no, try somebody else. Yeah, and, and I think the big part of it, oh, we got a guy down right on the sideline. It's Bolden, yeah. Ed Bolden, who was they're trying to throw the football to. It's maybe how he came down with all his body weight. Yeah, you see the back of his helmet hit the turf there. Didn't have a chance to brace himself with his hands. Look how tight the coverage was, though. Yeah. Mm. He had one interception, Muhammad, on the season coming in as a pair tonight. Has broken up a number of passes, four of them. What, what you love about Muhammad is, you know, tonight he's he's been out in coverage a lot, but he is a, he, he gets up and run support. You know, he's a physical guy. <clears throat> Great to see Bolton up. So inside of six minutes. Look at that, five game-winning drives in his career, going back to his days at Clemson. He's got a free play here. Huskies jumped offside again. Tries to take advantage of it downfield, and it's broken up and almost intercepted by Muhammad. Wouldn't have counted, of course, as the Huskies give the Beavers five free yards again. He threw it out to Trent Walker because of his height. What the heck? Take a shot. Offside. Defense. Number 52. I got penalty. Still second down. I'm all for taking a shot, but I again I don't I don't know if I go. <laughs> you know what? Let's see one more time. Let's try it one more time. See if you can make a play. I think he just I think he's enamored with the size and the length of this receiver in Walker at 6'2. But Washington just not disciplined up front. Just a third time tonight, not able to hold their water. So it's second and five. Martinez dragging four or five white jerseys for a first down across the 30. That clock is important, not just for Oregon State, depending on how this drive goes, but for Michael Penix and Washington. They're under 530. Oregon State, who's really good at possessing the ball. Remember that long drive they had earlier? Took a lot of time off the clock. They're going to take as much time as they can now that they got away from the shadow of their own goal line. Hasn't been a very good night on third down, but that was clutch. That catch by Gould to get this drive going. Using almost the whole play clock. Fenwick knocked down after about three. The clock continues to move inside of five minutes. You keep talking about how there's so much at stake for both teams. Oregon State trying to beat Washington. They got to Oregon next week. They're trying to get to Las Vegas. Kalen DeBoer has had a magical season. His team has been resilient. They've been tested so many times in this conference, and they've answered the bell. That clock concerns me if I'm Washington. This defense is going to have to make some plays here and not allow DJ Ungalale to work this clock to get into field goal range to maybe end this game. DJ looking to throw, cross the field, catch made, and another first down. Silas Bolden grabbed it. They moved the six again out across the 40. And it's such a good job the way they marry these run plays. Watch the offensive line. Watch the linebackers react. They're concerned about that run game. And now you're out of position on the back side. It's just so perfectly timed. And they are so efficient on how they do it because you have to respect that play fake. And you've got to run downhill as a defender. And then they pull it and go the other way. And it puts you in a tough spot. Yeah, it's so unorthodox, this attack, isn't it? Yep. This conference is very, very tough to stop. Again, the play clock almost entirely used up before they hand it to Martinez again. And this time he's hit behind the line and knocked backwards. 
Really good job that time. I, to knew if he got there first, Kurt. Yeah, and pushed from the interior. Usually you see an edge player that's able to make a play like that, but he worked from the inside out, showing his strength. He's a 260-pound guy. He could play defensive tackle or defensive end. It's a big play on first and ten because he put Uwe Ungalale in a little bit more of an obvious passing situation. Huskies rush four. DJ launching downfield. It was over the head and out of bounds. Bolden was very well covered by Elijah Jackson. Now we got a third and 11 coming up. Yeah. Jackson uses the sideline as, as his ally here. See him push right there. Now you take any, even when he works his way back inside, there's no room out there. Put the quarterback in a really tough spot. So the length by Jackson with that push to get him out of bounds and he comes back in there's just no cushion at all Penix said please let's get up the field get me the football back it's been a struggle that one completion he had a few minutes ago was the one third down catch his receivers have made where does he look this time quick throw catch made not a first down Trent Walker, a seldom used receiver, just his third catch of the season, and Carson Bruner grabbed him. Now it's fourth down. They need about five here. Here we go. Play of the game. By playing methodically, they put it all on this drive. That is the downside of taking your time. And now the Huskies chance to give their offense the football in Oregon State territory. Here's the guy to watch. Braylon Trice. Pratty in the line showing pressure. They bring it. Uyunga the way. Backpedaling, backpedaling. Over the middle, incomplete. That time they heated up the pocket, forced the quarterback on his back foot, and the Huskies will take over. Well, I, this is a tough play for the tight end, Velling. Watch the timing of this, and Velling just kind of quits on the route. Right here, he's, he start, he's wondering, should I continue or should I let up? Watch how he just kind of lets up. And I really think Uwe Ungerle thought he would continue to work across the middle. Was there a jersey tug there by Hampton a little bit er earlier in the route? Not at the end, but I think a little bit earlier in the why he was running his route. But they've been letting that go tonight. Oregon State can, of course, get the football back. They've got two timeouts. But Washington, a chance to put the game away right here with a touchdown. Johnson lowers the head. Big collision with Oladapo, picked up a few. And they do spend a timeout. Smith stopping the clock right here. So now he's going all in on this series of downs to get the ball back. He has to. I mean, two minutes. It, it, they really went all in on the last yeah. series. What do you think about that? Football. I, I mean, it's their style. It's it, is. They do. it is. And, and they had a great deal of success on that 15-play drive where they were just methodically moving it down the field, play action, run the football. It worked great for them. And I think once they got out of their, near their own goal line, I think they thought, let's just do the same thing the way it worked the last time out. I'm telling you, that first and 10 play was the play because it was second and 12 after that. Yep. And, and now you got, the, instead of being at second and six and second and seven and third and three, the way they have been, they got behind the sticks. That was a critical play on first and 10. For Michael Penix, it hasn't been a big stat night. Not what you expect from a strong Heisman contender. Just 143 yards, has a touchdown run, two touchdown passes, but a chance to step up here and seal the victory if he can get a first down. It's Johnson again who makes a cut and slams downhill third and two, and they'll spend the final time out here. Dylan Johnson, a guy who has been a underappreciated part of this offense with all Penix fireworks and all those receivers, but Johnson, a guy who's going to end up 
and very likely with a thousand yards rushing in the season approaching 100 yards tonight averaging 5.6 yeah. carry yeah, i mean I, I i think he's i think he's a forgotten piece I, you know if you if you're a washington husky fan or you and i because we've been around him so much you have full appreciation for what he brings to the table Penix does get a lot of the national attention but man right here it's about johnson and this offensive line ball spotted at the 40 they need three on third down would, would you throw a wrinkle and, and fake the Johnson and keep the ball with Penix almost like a like a pistol zone read kind of thing? Or do you just rip, just jam up? Oh, now they're going to... They shift miss. everybody around. Four receivers to the right. Empty backfield. Penix looks to the other side and goes to his reliable weapon. When in doubt, dial up Odunze. Then that should do it. <laughs> I was thinking, wait, are they going to go quarterback draw here? No, of course not. They're setting up a one-on-one -on -one chance. They put everybody to the right. That's like a point guard saying, clear it out. Clear it out. One-on-one, -on -one, you take it to the rack. And that's what a doomsday did against a true freshman corner, who, by the way, has held his own tonight. Played pretty well. But the back shoulder fade, such a difficult thing to defend. And Penix and his main target close this one out. It's one of the trademark celebrations. It wasn't a touchdown, but it was a huge completion on third down. It's their third first down of the half. That's it. And without the ability to stop the clock, that's going to do it. And Washington State is going to come in here to a very hostile environment on a rainy night and extend the winning streak to 18 and head to the Apple Cup in Seattle with a chance to close out a perfect regular season. They have booked their spot in Las Vegas by winning here tonight yeah. in the conference championship game. It, it's, it's all, at this point in the season, you get into these, think about what they've been through in the last few weeks. USC, when USC had a lot of firepower, it was a different kind of confident SC team at the Coliseum, dealt with a physical Utah team, come on the road now against Oregon State, take their best shot, got a rivalry game next week. And they've earned every aspect of this season to be sitting here now at 11 and 0. you'll say well it wasn't a big night but we said step up make a clutch throw it was a long throw beautifully placed to odunze to seal it and vintage kalen de you know and, and his offensive coordinator ryan grubb that they show the confidence in Penix and odunze instead of doing the conventional thing and running the ball they're out of timeouts they rolled the dice. That ball's incomplete. Oregon State gets the ball back. Instead, completion, first down, game over. A lot of respect between these two coaches who put their ego in the background and put their players and their programs out front. We'll see who the opponent is. Will it be a rematch with Oregon? They take a big step here as Oregon State takes a second conference loss. We know that DeBoer and the Huskies will be there. They'll try to finish business in the Apple Cup at home against a struggling Wazoo team. Let's go to Holly. You're good. You're good. Hey, Coach, this was a challenging night in a place that's hard to win. How did your team find a way tonight? Yeah, I mean, just uh, everyone playing. Uh, keep playing the next play. Um, defense is on the field a lot in the second half, you know, and uh, got off when they needed to. And uh, what a play down the end at the end with uh, Penix to Rome. Michael Penix and Romo Dunze, they just have been so terrific all season long. But that play in that moment to kind of ice this game, what was you thinking as you saw that catch come in? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's our go-to guys, you know. Uh, let them let them work. There's other options, but uh, they've done it before, and I'm sure they'll do it again. Your defensive front, a huge stop that stopped that drive for Oregon State. What do you see from this defense? They've had a lot of guys injured, a lot of guys down, but they find a way again. Uh, I'm just super proud. Um, yeah, we got them behind the chains, and we knew that that's when uh, we have the advantage. And so, proud of the way the guys just keep fighting, rotate. You knew that next guy up mentality, and uh, let's go find a way. 18 in a row, it's hard to do. Why does this keep happening to your team? What's special? We have, we have a lot of guys that uh, have put a lot into this program, major investment, and uh, they're not going to go down lightly. Uh, they're going to keep fighting. They're going to keep playing. They believe in each other. Um, they're going to do it for each other. Thank you so much, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Again, they had opportunities to put this game away. Kirk Washington held scoreless in the second half. Barely had the football just six and a half minutes 
only 69 yards of offense, but as he said, you trust your best players in the biggest moment, and that delivered the clinching first down. Yeah, I, I just love these games that come down. You get tested. You know, you find out what you're made out of. You want to keep your magical season alive. You got to make plays down the stretch and, and get out with a win on the road. And they did it. What are you here for, Michael Pettis? Yeah, love Come to. Back to Holly. Let's do it. Michael, this was a game of overcoming challenges. Tell me how hard it was in the first half with the rain pouring down, trying to find those completions. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't say it was hard, you know, but um, obviously, you know, weather, it did play a little bit of a factor, but we found a way to win, and that's what it's all about. You know, find a ways to win and uh, continue to keep pushing and trusting and believing in each other, and that's what it took today. You're on the bench for much of that third quarter. You're trying to find a rhythm when you've been sitting out so long. How did you find it on the biggest play to extend that last drive? Yeah, man, it's just, just trusting my guys, you know, and trusting the defense, you know, knowing that they're going to get off the field and uh, give us that big, big time fourth down stop at the uh, at the end of the game, and uh, just trusting Rome, man. Rome, he's been great all all day, all season, and uh, just giving him a chance with the ball, you know, to to continue to move the ball forward. You know, I knew that uh, we were going to be good. I think you guys say on the inside, find a way, keep finding a way. How does this team keep doing just that? Yeah, man. Like I said, just trusting and believing in each other, you know, and just knowing that, you know, we can't let um. We can't have no excuses for our circumstances, you know? So like the rain and stuff and all that today, you know, we can't have no excuses for it. You know, all week we was talking about that, you know, to make sure we just find a way to win. And no matter what, what, what happens, we just gotta make sure we go out there and put it all on the line for the team. One more against an arch rival to get to the Pac-12 championship game against Washington State next week. How do you guys find one more time, one more magic bullet? Yeah, just taking it one day at a time, you know, and just continue to trust the process. And, you know, just going out and dominating each, each and every day, you know, not just on Saturdays, but throughout the week as well. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Shout out to my old line, man. I ain't get touched all day. <laughs> That's the second straight year that Oregon State hasn't sacked him. He was very, very well protected. And a tough night for receivers. Odunze was just monstrous. Seven catches, 106, two touchdowns in that clinching play. Harvard Harrison Jr. of Ohio State is a tremendous wide receiver. There are other guys around who are elite and who can play the position. Odunze, to me, is as good as anybody. Oh, man. He, he's got a combination of skills that make him elite. Uh, it came up clutch. You know, I, I think this is a game that I think we'll, we'll be talking about for a while. It seems like when these two teams get together, it always comes down to that final moment. Last time, I, though. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true that's true um how about oregon state chris we, we we need to say this i mean jonathan smith's former player here he's built this thing up the right way had some close losses last year and then this year lost by three a loss by three and now a loss by two this is a very very good football team and uh it's gonna be a tough one for oregon next week in that rivalry game yeah they have to go to the civil war and they will play up in eugene but washington survives and advances that's the mo of this team and they may not always wow you in every facet of the game with a little vulnerable on defense sometimes but the skill that they have and the resilience and the intangibles are and impressive there is it one undefeated team that's been tested like Washington. They have been through a gauntlet in this conference. It's the deepest conference. So I don't care if they survive in advance. I don't care what it looks like. They need respect for what they've had to deal with because they get challenged every single week. You can't say that about these other undefeated teams this year. Do you still believe, though, that they control their destiny, that a perfect I season do. and a Pac-12 champion gets you in the bracket? I, 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 I think they control their own destiny for sure because of what I just said, what they've been through, still have the rivalry game, and it, they still have a, more than likely you're going to see Oregon in a Pac-12 championship game. I'd make a case that Oregon's maybe the best one-loss team in the country right now. That was their only team Oregon had lost to was Washington, and it's a rematch in Vegas on a Friday night. Heavily favored against Wazoo. They'll be underdogs if they do rematch against the Ducks in Las Vegas. We're not there yet, but it's a big step closer as the Huskies come to Corvallis and extend the win streak amidst all the rain and all the chainsaws and a very, very tough opponent. Great job by our crew in very, very tough conditions tonight. Bill Bunnell produced the game. Jimmy Platt directed it for Holly and Kirk and Bill Amagne. Chris Fowler saying so long, except on the West Coast. Stay tuned for your local news or for most of these ABC stations.